Welcome to Midwest Paranormal Presents Paranormal Soup. I'm your host, Jason Bland, and tonight our guest is Marley Love. Now, we'll read her bio and you'll see her bio and you'll find out she is a life coach, but tonight, for the first time, Marley's going to share her paranormal experience. She hasn't told many people about it, um, so I'm giving her the floor. This is why I do Paranormal Soup, is to give people a forum to talk about their paranormal experiences. So I'm very honored tonight. This will be her first time telling this story publicly. Um, So again, this is why I do the show. So I'm very honored. And of course, also why I do the show is World Wide Web of Weird. We'll have that coming up. And we will have phone calls later in the show. All right, guys, let's get rolling into the show. Welcome to another night of Paranormal Soup. I'm your host, Jason Bland. Tonight, we did the whole pre-scheduled video thing again, and we, I went live early to see if it would go. Well, guess what? It doesn't go live until that time. So that's what screwed us up last week. I was like, it's not live. It's not live because it wasn't at that time. It wasn't doing it. So it screwed everything up last week. This week, it should be fine. It says I have six or seven viewers at the moment just starting to fill in. I didn't share it out like I usually share it out. So do me a favor if you're watching the show. Please share out the link. Share it out. That's the best thing. I don't take donations yet for the show or anything. We do take donations for Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network. You could help us out with that. But for the show, I don't. The best thing you can do to help this show is to spread the word. Let people know about Paranormal Soup. All right. Joining me every Sunday night is my lovely co-host. Let me get my share screen up here people uh listening on late night in the midlands we are a webcast out to uh uh facebook on our facebook page midwest paranormal presents paranormal soup here you can see us you can see the pictures and videos tonight no videos for the worldwide but we're a lot of articles a lot of crazy weird stuff to go over uh but my co-host is with us how you doing tonight jamie d i'm doing great thank you (laughs) glad to have you and then all the way from st augustine florida rob autry himself how you doing tonight rob Great, great. Glad to be here. <laughs> now, usually the last show, I know people are like, well, the last show of the month is usually an ITC show, or at least every other time. And there hasn't been one. And I apologize. I am booked with guests all the way into February of 2019 right now. So I started ahead to use some updates. We do, we will have an ITC show. We might have some ITC stuff, maybe on the side <laughs> coming up. Uh, but yeah, we haven't, I've had to book so many guests, I haven't had room. I'm kind of saving the ITC if I have a cancellation. If I have a cancellation, it's going to be an ITC night. Uh, right now, the next one scheduled isn't until Halloween. <laughs> That's how booked I am. Like I said, all the way into February 2019. All right, guys. And tonight, also, we are moving into a three-hour time frame. Not, it's, by November, I think every guest will be three hours. But tonight is three hours. Mar- I want to give Marley uh, plenty of room to tell her story tonight. Like I said, this is her kind of paranormal coming out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I do the show for. All right, let's do what we do every Sunday night is the World Wide Web of Weird. Tonight on the World Wide Web of Weird, we're going to start out with an article from Unexplained Mysteries. I find kind of interesting and kind of sad, maybe. Uh, you'd think with all the internet videos of UFOs and all the stuff we see constantly, you know, people's sightings and that, that, man, UFO sightings are on the rise. Well, according to this article from Unexplained Mysteries, UFO reports have been in decline since 2014. Kind of shock. Kind of shock. For people, uh, like I said, listening on Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network, we are a webcast. You can watch us uh, on Midwest Paranormal Presents 
Paranormal Soup, our Facebook page, uh, where you can see the videos and pictures. Tonight, really no videos, just just uh, articles. So just, if you want to keep listening, that's fine. And for people watching, we do play music out the late night in the Midlands Radio Network. You won't hear when we go to commercial breaks. So don't freak out. We will be back. All right. Unexplained mysteries. UFO, UFO reports have been in decline since 2014. Uh, according to the National UFO Reporting Center, uh, the number of sightings have been steadily rising since the 90s before suffering a sudden sharp decline around four years ago. Uh, the figure had dropped from 8,670 reports in 2014 to a mere 1,329 as of June this year. The significant decrease in numbers of reports have baffled everyone investigating within UFO field, uh, the founder uh, Peter Davenport told Business Insider. Uh, these same... The, we see the same trend, and they all are confused. It could just be there are fewer and fewer incidents, but it's also possible that the reports of UFO organizations are being intercepted electronically. Uh, Alex uh, Griffion, uh, co-founder of the Netherlands-based UFO Disclosure Office, has another theory. A decrease in the number of reports doesn't actually equate to a drop in the number of UFO sightings, he said. It may also mean the NUFORC website has become more difficult to find or perhaps less useful. Uh, Griffion has also suggested an increase in drone use may be a big contributor factor. Most people might write it off. Oh, it's just a drone. Uh, drones are becoming cheaper and more popular and uh, taking our stra stranger and stranger shapes every day, he said. We hear and read that they can do more and more, so people now respond to seeing strange moving lights with, oh, it'll be a drone. And I do that. I'll admit that. I, a lot of times my first thought is, is that a drone? You know, I mean, that's what we have to face. Now, besides the CGI illusions of videos that people can make, you have to wonder uh, when you actually are seeing something, is that a drone up in the sky? All right, let's move on to article number two. This comes from AlienUFOSightings.com. Uh, meet the first artificial, uh, and this isn't about UFOs, meet the first artificial animal made from 3D printing and genetic engineering. Now, we've got a picture of it up here. It's like a little stingray. Uh, nobody thought that a rat, uh, <laughs> that a rat, some gold and silicon would develop into a small stingray one day. However, using 3D printing and genetic engineering, a group of scientists have carried out a research lately in order to create a, a bona fide, uh, or bona fide, a biohybrid animal. Is it bona fide? Uh, in order to move this tiny swimmer, uh, it uses mesh rat heart muscle cells inside a silicon body to pulse, hence allowing the tiny flipper areas of its body to swim through water. It's, a ske it's skeletons made up from a 3D printed gold which permits it to store energy from movement. With the uh, help of light cues, scientists can control this nickel-sized creature. The use of the rat heart cells is the key to the silicone stingray since they allow it to be uh, so tiny whilst being capable of moving on its own. It would have been very large as com uh, it would have been very large as compared to now in case the motors had been employed. The muscles also help the tiny stingray by working as control systems in addition to allowing it to move. The scientists were able to control it using flashing lights as the cells were engineered to be sensitive to light by means of genetic engineering. Shining a light on one side causes it to change direction, and then the speed of the flashlight manages the speed at which the creature moves. The cells were also shaped so that the mesh of the cells would work with the shape of the stingray's body. I find it kind of creepy. <laughs> I'm getting mad scientists, you know, that they can make something like this. And, of course, they got to put it right, like, it's the size of your eye, you know. You know, ooh, I don't know. Harvard Disease uh, Biophysics Group, led by Kevin K Kit Parker with a team of scientists from the University of Illinois, the University of Michigan, and Stanford Medical Center headed the project. Uh, despite that fact that such advancements is always thrilling to witness, it's also disturbing to some extent as several Hollywood movies have demonstrated very clearly that artificial creatures such as a stingray are never a good idea. Yeah, there's plenty of movies with that uh, as the main plot line. Uh, the question remains, why is it so? The project was uh, really a research exercise with any doubt, no matter how much it would be tempted yet frightened to have one as a pet. Artificial animals could indeed be very beneficial for a wide range of applications, such as for treatments and surgery, although there are also several wider applications. So surgery, they put one of these things in your body to do the surgery. How, how comfortable are you with that? I don't know. I've been an alien before, man. I know how it ends. Yeah, right? You know, you're just sitting there eating your cereal, and next thing you know, you got an alien coming out your stomach. No, yep. it, this would be artificial created one. It is hoped that the knowledge gained by the research will be able to help research development for a creation of artificial hearts. This tiny artificial animal could also be a step forward in the world of artificial cognition, too. Uh, yeah, I, I just think of, like, uh like little robotic monsters getting inside of you and doing crazy things. I don't know. My sci-fi brain doesn't like the idea of it. All right, let's move on. 
All right, we Smoke talked about this. Trouble. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Sounded like a good idea at the time. That's the famous last words of a mad scientist. Um, this comes from the, uh, the Hill, but uh, we talked about this candidate, I think, a year ago when she announced she was going to run for Congress. Now a Miami Herald has endorsed her. Uh, Miami Herald endorses House candidate who claims aliens took her aboard a spaceship. The Miami Herald is endorsing congressional candidate who claims to have communicated with aliens through her life and says extraterrestrials once visited her. The newspaper on Sunday endorsed Benita Rodriguez Alguera, who is running as a Republican for the represent, uh, representative Illinois Ross Littman seat in the Republican primary for Florida's 27th congressional district. Uh, the newspaper called her a strong candidate in the race of plausible uh, conservative ideas. Uh, I went in, there were some round seats there uh, that were there and some quartz rocks that controlled the ship. Not like airplanes, Rodriguez said in an interview. She said she was visited by three large blonde beans. In a separate interview with our, uh, Harold last year, she said she joins the majority of Americans who believe that there must be intelligent life uh, with the billions of planets and galaxies in the universe. New, newspaper editorial, editorial board, well, I cannot talk, acknowledged in its endorsements that Rodriguez Aguirre is an unusual candidate, but agreed with her assessment that her past comments about aliens aren't an issue in the race. And dang straight. Thank you, Miami Herald. Thank you. Something good from Florida, Rob. I think that's it's awesome. It's a rarity. It's a rarity. I, I think it's awesome, though, that, you know, back in the day, if somebody was running like this and said that, they'd be laughed out of running out of our office. Now more people are accepting of it. Even the major newspaper is more accepting of it. They're endorsing her. They don't care if she said this. They might not endorse that idea, uh, but they at least it doesn't bother them, and it doesn't bother the people who want to vote for her, you know, hopefully. Hopefully she wins. I, I'm Go, go. Go, woman. I, 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 I can't. I'm so supportive of this woman. I, I don't know about her politics. I don't know, but I kind of want her to win, just because I think it's awesome that she can come out, say this, admit it, and and move on and uh, have a life and do a career and not be afraid to talk about. It. That's what this show's about tonight. We have somebody else. They're not in the paranormal field. People reading the bio, going, "Oh, she's not in the paranormal." Well, guess what? This is what the show's about. It's giving people that ability to come out and talk about it, have a form of openness. So that's what that's what I love about this story. All right, let's move on. Number four, uh, this isn't paranormal. This is just really messed up. <laughs> this is really messed up. Uh, WBTV, father seeks justice after hospital guard had sex with his daughter's corpse. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee, a security guard had its sex with a corpse in a hospital storage room, according to Shelby County Sheriff's Office. Deputies arrested Cameron Wright on charges of abuse of a corpse. A witness reported seeing Wright with the corpse at San Francisco's, uh, San Francisco's I cannot talk. San, San Francis Hospital. Officers arrived and took right to jail. Man, imagine that scene, catching a guy doing that. Oh, my God, that would be awful. Investigator said Wright admitted to the crime. He was booked on a $3,000 bond. San Francis Hospital, I cannot say that tonight, released the following statement. Treating those uh, we, uh, we serve with dignity and respect is our top priority. The behavior of this individual does not represent what our hospital stands for, and these actions are completely unacceptable. Well, duh. That's We're, good to know. Yeah, that's really good to know. Uh, we are saddened by this incident, and we are empathetic and sympathetic to the family's pa uh, family of the patient. We uh, we contract with U.S. Security Associates for our hospital security services, and all of our officers are required to undergo thorough background checks. The security guard involved in the situation has been terminated. Really? No. Uh, surprised. Now the family of the woman, April uh, Param, uh, is left reeling and wants answers. If you ever had a daughter in this world and you wish you would be just, you would wish she would just be like April, said April's father, James Param. This poor family. Understandably emotional, James is having trouble understanding what happened to his 37-year-old daughter, a kindergarten school teacher. Not only dealing with her death, I'm dealing with this and it's not fair no it's not april prime died wednesday around 2 a.m at san francis hospital her family was with her and said she entered the hospital for mental issues that she was apparently overcoming when she had a heart attack and died oh that's awful his ex-wife contacted him later in the day to say the hospital gave a vague description of what happened after his daughter died oh my god i could not imagine losing a child and then having to go through this you know because of some sicko um yeah i mean what i hmm. I, I don't understand. I mean, I know and, there's and messed how about up people. The awkward moment where whoever got him like walked in. And right. Like, how did that conversation go? Yeah, like it would be a bleeps because uh, we're on radio right now. But my my idea would be a bunch of words we'd have to bleep out on here. Uh, and what are you doing? Uh, oh my god, 
It's just so horrible and this family had to go through this. Like I said earlier, has he done it before, before he finally got caught? Right. Well, they, you know, they said they did a background check and all that stuff. Well, if he's been getting away with it, you know, I mean, it, it might have been his first time and he's just stupid about it. But I, I hope it was his first time. I hope he didn't do this to anybody else. But, like, how does somebody get off on that? I don't, I mean, I guess we shouldn't understand it. I don't want to understand it. But it just, I just, I don't get it. You know, you, you hear about that there's people that do this. But when you when somebody is actually caught doing it, it's like it really brings it home. This is real. People really do this. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you know. And, and this poor family, this poor family, you know, that they, they, they lost their child, and to have to deal with that emotionally and mentally, I, I you know, my heart goes out to them. You know, th this is just god awful. All right, let's move on. More messed up. <laughs> More Let's messed get a little up weirder stuff. now. Let's, no, we're going to get a little bit weirder. We're going to get a lot weirder. This is from USA Today. <laughs> oh, God. Men accused of sexually abusing dogs, horses, and a, and a cow and a goat. Let's add in a goat. More than 1,000 times. Yes. Uh, three Pennsylvania men will face more than 1,000 counts of sexual intercourse with animals, among other charges, officials announced Monday. The men are accused of abusing animals, including dogs, horses, a cow, a goat, and a makeshift farm in Clearfield County District, District Attorney William A. Shaw Jr. said in a release. Terry Wallace, 41, Matthew Br Br Brubaker, 32, Mark Minsk, Cough. I, I don't butcher his name, don't care. 34 are each accused of uh, 1,460 counts of sexual intercourse with animals and cruelty to animals, in addition to felony charges relating to endangering the welfare of children and corruption of minors. The charges come from after a six year old boy living with the men reported, reported them to the police. He told authorities that a specifically designed pin was used for sexual contact. Uh, when police arrested the men on Saturday, they found cameras used to make large volumes of homemade videos. So that's how they know, like, how many counts? It's probably, that means they had that many videos. <laughs> I mean, that's, they got that many counts. It's because they had that many videos probably to go up. Here's the video number 1,455, sex with goat. Charge them with that. <laughs> oh, God. So I've been doing this for over 20 years, and this is probably the worst situation of this type of case I've ever come across, Sean told the WJAC-TV. The release say police and animal rescue workers were still finding placements for the animals on Monday. Shaw said in a release that he does not believe the boy involved was sexually abused, although an investigation is ongoing. Yeah, investigate that. Uh, I mean, what, you, what, 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 you know, like, you know, the guy having sex with the corpse, you know, you know there's random people out there that are just messed up, messed up. But you have three guys, three messed up individuals, really sick in the head, messed up individuals, somehow came together and did this. You know what I'm saying? I oh. could say something right now, but I won't. You know, they were, I was just reading an article about like the most messed up X Files episode, and it reminds me of this kind of situation. There was like yeah. it was like inbred family, whatever. And I remember that episode. I can't remember the uh, homecoming. I don't remember. I think it was something like that. Uh, no, I can't remember the name of the world the episode now, but it was an X-Files episode that scarred me. And it reminds me of this kind of story. But man, how do these three guys find each other? There's some serial killer stories out there. I know where some messed up serial killers kind of connected and did dirty deeds together. But, you know, just how did like and how does that come up? Like, hey, uh, I kind of like goats. Do you like goats? Do you wow, really like goats? <laughs> You're right. Like, how does that how does where's the opener on that one? The dark <laughs> like, web, man. <laughs> How did these three really messed up individuals come out to each other that they like animals? I guess the internet, man. <laughs> it's probably the internet. <laughs> the internet doing amazing things, bringing pervs together <laughs> since 1990. Okay, let's move on, please. All right, number six. This one, uh, Bill shared this with me. I thought this was a really cool, cool article. This is from Chieftain.com. Uh, weird 911 call spooks Pueblo police. I cannot talk tonight. I say that every night. I actually can't talk every night. Uh, dead silence on the line with the Pueblo police officers following up on an unexplained call by responding to its source, a local funeral home. And I've heard these stories before, you know, where they get these these phone calls and they tra trace a number because it's calling the police department and they find it's from some abandoned building or whatever nobody's there well, this was a funeral home they had this um a dark and shutter it was dark and shuttered without a soul around on the night shift police have to be prepared for anything including the possible phantom in the dead of night recently the dark department's communication center received a 3 30 a.m 3 30 a.m man in a 9-11 hang-up call that originated from a local funeral home. Uh, per, per protocol, a dispatcher called the number back. The call was picked up, but the dispatcher attempts to initiate a conversation were met only with silence. So somebody picked it up. 
that's even more creepy. Uh, yeah. We're not sure what happened, said Captain Tom Rummel, who first broke the bizarre occurrence via Twitter. Sometimes the line trouble will cause what we call it abandoned 911. Uh, but the weird thing about this one was the fact that when the dispatch called the number back, it was picked up. No verbal response, though. A, a dispatcher called an after-hours contact number associated with the funeral home and left a message. Officers were dispatched to the funeral home but discovered nothing amiss. Apparently, everything was okay because, as far as I know, nobody was dispatched back there after daylight, Rummel added. Uh, probably just line trouble, right? Let's go with that. But then there's this. In folklore, the witching hours at a time of night associated with supernatural events. Unearthly creatures are thought to appear to be at that uh, they're most powerful. In Western tradition, the switching hours between 3 and 4 a.m. That's what I thought when I saw the 3.30 a.m. call. You, you, couple possibilities. I mean, it's it's a functional funeral home. Is that somebody was maybe having a night drink there, or decided to call 911, and maybe they did something with a corpse there. I don't know. <laughs> but somebody yeah, physically could have called. Gone. Yeah, you know, and maybe didn't trip the alarms. I don't know, a worker there. I don't know. Yeah, or, that was my or, favorite one of the World Wide Web Weird. And it oh. reminded, you know, it reminded me when I was reading this, it reminded me, remember the one the Chill Seekers had when they got, like, the call from the dead at the, yeah. the um, store that they always go to? It was left on the answer machine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I just yeah, got yeah. I just got um, uh, Jimmy Pentonito's uh, book. I think the, um, uh, I know the last name's Hall is the other author of the book, is uh, um Oh God! I'm sorry, Jimmy. I'm, I have the book upstairs, and I have to sit in front of me. But it's about uh, it's like phone messages from the dead or whatever. It's about electronic communication of the dead. And I'm like, I have so many books I'm trying to read for guests coming up. But I'm like, I want to read that one, even though I don't have them scheduled to do a show. Jimmy, if you're listening, we need to do a show on that book. I know we kind of talked about it last time we had him on, but I mean, now that I got the book in my hand, I kind of want to have him back on after I read it. Um, it's such an interesting topic. It really is such an interesting topic because you, you've heard these stories uh, somehow. Any, well, what was that movie with uh, Christina Ricci? Like she's like she dies, or you think she, is she dead? Whatever, and it's Liam Neeson is like a morgue worker, um, and you don't know like is she is she is he like some sicko that may, like faked her death and like keeping her alive there, or is she really dead and she's a ghost and like she's trying to make a phone call from the morgue. You know, and she'd like gets through like for a second. You know, I think that was a scene in the movie. That's what I thought about when I read this article. I was like, is it like a ghost there that is like thinks they're trapped in the building or whatever, but they're really just dead? I don't know. Let's move on. Let's see here. This story I think is just hilarious. This is the last one for the night. Uh, tell this is from the telegraph.com or telegraph.co.uk. Jilted fiance posed as the ghost of his ex mother's ex mother ex's mother. Sorry, jilted fiance posed as the ghost of his ex's mother, urging her to take him back through psychic letters. <laughs> yes, oh, what an idea. Uh, a jilted fiancé posed as the ghost of his former partner's dead mother through psychic letters urging her to take him back, a, uh, a court has heard. Roy uh, Meadwell was trying to win back uh, Kay Winberry's affection, but was banned from contacting her due to restraining order imposed by uh, magistrates. The order, was also, uh, the order also banned him from entering Cornwall. Uh, he, wow, they really put a restraining order on him. He, uh, he has now gone on trial at extra crown court accused of breaking the order on five occasions, including one in which he sent a letter which purported to come from her dead mother via psychic in Tintin jail, Cornwall. Uh, the letter did not, I probably butchered that, sorry. The letter did not name Meadwell, but spoke of the man who sacrificed everything for you, the man who loves you, the man who wanted you to be his wife, and urged her, uh, all you have to do is call him. <laughs> Another anonymous email said to be from a well-wisher said, o OMG, can't you see the greatness in this man? Uh, wow, he really is his own best uh, advertiser right there. Meadwell, age 51 of U uh, Yeovilles, I'm sorry, my British friends, I don't know these towns, uh, denies five counts of breaking a restraining order. He says he had nothing to do with the messages which must have been sent without his knowledge by well-wishers who were trying to play Cupid. Really? Seriously, dude. Uh, Brian Fritzbert, uh, prosecutor, said a magistrate court in Cornwall made the restraining order banning any contact in December 2016 and strengthened it a month later by prohibiting Meadwell from entering Cornwall. It was a message from beyond the grave imploring her to take Meadwell back. Uh, Miss Winbury, who lives near uh, Newland, called the police after receiving the first letter on July 11th. Uh, it was anonymous but was accompanied by a leaflet from the Willow Moon Tarot Shop in Titton Jail. I don't know how to say it name and its content made it clear it was supposed to be a message from beyond the grave from her mother man how low do you have to be <laughs> she went on to receive another letter apparently from a well-wisher facebook message that must have been the one um 
it was identical to that of her stepmother's. Miss Fritcher said the letters and messages referred to incidents which only Miss Winbury and Meadwell knew about. Uh, the final par- paragraph of the first letter purports to be a message from her dead mother. It was a message from beyond the grave, imploring her to take him back. Wow, really desperate, dude. Really desperate, coming on a little bit strong. <laughs> you know, they say about the the crazy ones is they're committed. <laughs> they're committed, all right. Wow, I mean, seriously, like. Or they need to be. Right. I mean, like, where did he come up with this? <laughs> Like, like, who, how, how would I get her back? Oh, I'll just pretend to be a psychic <laughs> and tell her. I mean, wow, creative. Like, he gets an A-plus for being very creative for a stalker <laughs> or an ex-boyfriend who turned to stalker. Wow, that is messed up. You know, I was going to play um, really viral was the mermaid video. I didn't play it tonight. There's, I wanted to let everyone know there's that. F- it's one of those videos on that feedy site that shows up on Facebook now all the time for me. I don't know if it does for you, but they got all these videos and they're some of them are like years old. They just regurgitate them and put some cheap story with it that doesn't even probably isn't the right story. And they just regurgitate these videos. So I'm like, I'm not gonna play it. Um I think I've seen that video. I might have played it already in the World Wide Web Weird. I have to go back through my shows now. We're like three years old now. Um, but I the, that I I know people probably know what I'm talking about. It's like a mermaid swimming in a canal. I'm not gonna show it. We're not going to show it, but uh, those those new like video they they're just like posting these videos left and right of you know, some are paranormal, some aren't, but they're they're all just do your research. A lot of them are old regurgitated videos that might not be paranormal or as weird as they think they are. I don't know, just one of those things I noticed, and I was like, eh, I'm not going to do that for the World Wide Web of Weird. But that's it. That's it for the World Wide Web of Weird. Uh, our guest tonight is Marley Love. Like I said, she's a life coach, but we're going to talk about her paranormal experience. This is her kind of coming out paranormal party tonight, <laughs> and that's what this show's about. It's why I do this show, is to give people a platform to talk about their experiences. Uh, and, and you can call in later in the show and share your experience with us as well, or ask Marley a question if you want, be it about it anything um but uh we do play music out to late night in the midlands radio network that you cannot hear on facebook so don't freak out when you hear the quiet we will be back with our guest marley love we're going to talk about her paranormal experience that shaped her life all right guys we'll be back with you in just a few minutes Tonight on Paranormal Soup, our guest is Marley Love. Marley Love is a life coach who helps professional millennials embrace their worth and step into their life's purpose by unleashing their hidden potential. Marley, once a professional millennial that didn't know her worth and purpose, instead of retreating and settling for a life others told her she needed to live, she began to seek and she found. She began to dig deeper into God's word and develop a general relationship with God. Marley was once a professional millennial that didn't know... Well, it repeated itself. Sorry. Marley has written her book detailing her five-step purpose plan titled Five Steps to Find Your Purpose and Destiny, a guide to help you find uh, the true you. She is a life coach. And you're like, what, what's paranormal tonight? Well, tonight, Marley's coming out with her paranormal experience she had. And that's what this show is for. It's for people to come on and be a forum to tell about the unusual, the unexplained, most things people have not experienced, but some have. I think a lot more than people willing to admit. And tonight, Marley's coming on and telling her story. Uh, We will take phone calls later in the show. So let's go ahead and get to our guest. You there with me, Marley? Oh, hi. Yes, I'm here. Awesome. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> thank, awesome. you for, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Um, I gave a little bit of a description of who you are, but I'm going to definitely here give you the floor um, to tell the audience a little bit more about yourself, and then we can get into your story. Definitely. Well, first, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm really excited to be here and so excited to talk with everyone today. But um, like you said, Jason, I'm a life coach that just helps um, millennials kind of find their life purpose because I feel like we all have a purpose in this world. And um, the story that I'm sharing today kind of helped um, propel me into my purpose. And so um, basically that just kind of got me to help other people. Years, so yeah. uh, you know I, I the the paranormal as they call it or the supernatural mm-hmm. I think uh, plays a role in a lot of people's lives that people don't know you know uh, how it shapes and gears them towards something and maybe not not into the paranormal but it helped influence them in some way a, a loved one confirming an idea um, 
that you might have had in your head, like coming to you in a dream and telling you, yeah, do that with your life, you know, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. I mean, the paranormal has definitely shaped people's lives in some way or shape or form. I think a lot of people. I definitely agree. And like you said, even a dream, I actually um, interpret dreams for people really? as well. Yes, that's uh, one of my passions. I absolutely it's so love interesting. It. It's so interesting of a topic. Uh, it is. And I've listened to a few shows lately about dream interpretation. So we might have to talk a little bit about that tonight, too, because definitely. Is, um, it's definitely something that interests me. And I mean, I, I have some messed up dreams. I'll tell you. What. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, go ahead. Keep. I'm sorry. I, I'm interrupting. That's my I, my flaw. Uh, go ahead oh. and uh, keep telling people who you are. And what, we'll get into the story. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I was just saying, I interpret dreams as well, like with my life coaching and for people that aren't my clients as well. So if people do have dreams that they're like, what the heck does this mean? They can just go to my website and I interpret them for free for people. Uh Yeah. Um, and if they want to kind of dive deeper into it, I do have like a little coaching package for that as well. But for, you know, the baseline, they could just, I just ask them a few questions about their dream, um, in my form and, um, then they just put as much information as they can remember. And then within like usually 24 to 48 hours, I'll um, get back with them with a dream interpretation. You better watch out. You might get a lot of those after the night. I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's totally up my, my – we, I call – you know, one of the things I said, you know, uh, I had a few people ask me, they read your bio, like, oh, what's the paranormal thing to that? I'm like, it's mm-hmm. coming. Because, you know, yeah. the, when you contacted me and said, I have not ever shared this experience, I felt truly honored because I'm like, that. this is exactly why I do this show, is to give you a chance to give anybody a chance to tell these stories. Um, because, you know, like you, you told me in private, you know, you'd only mm-hmm. told some family members. You never talked mm-hmm. publicly about it. It, it's hard for people, understandably, because for so long there's been such a faux pas on, on talking about the supernatural and the paranormal, or even religion itself anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, even, exactly. you know, I think it's easier to talk about the paranormal than it is to even talk about God nowadays. Yeah, so so true. Hundred percent agree with you. I and yeah, you say paranormal, supernatural, like that's all like within like the God realm. So I do call myself, you know, a Christian life coach and stuff. I don't um, judge people, but like it's it all mixes in and like you said it's hard for people to to comprehend or talk talk about it openly but i think for me i was a little nervous to talk about my experience because i come from like the christian side i'm like oh i hope they don't you know judge me for it but in the end i think it's going to help so many people to kind of understand that we all have these experiences and what you can do with them really can help propel you to your purpose and your destiny. So, so I don't know how you want to begin with this story, how, how you got, you know, what shaped you. Or I'm going to leave it to you. You guide us uh, into this story here tonight. you got plenty of time to tell it. Okay, sure. So um, I guess it, it all started in 2013. So before this, I guess it was my me and my husband's one-year wedding anniversary. So we wanted to take a vacation somewhere to kind of celebrate and stuff. And so um, I remember talking with some of my friends maybe two months before our anniversary. And they said, oh, hey, we went to um, this Caribbean place. I guess I could say where it is. I don't want (laughs) to put it all out there, but (laughs) I have to. Um, So they were like, oh, we went to Jamaica. And it was really awesome. We stayed at this resort. It was great. Da-da-da. So I was like, okay, um, maybe that's a cool place to go. So I've always wanted to go. I've yeah, I always want to go to Jamaica. I'm a big James Bond fan, and uh, a lot of the books uh, take place because Ian Fleming's had a, a place called Goldeneye in Jamaica. So I've always oh. been fascinated with Jamaica. I've always wanted to go. One day we're talking about yeah. this soon, actually. Yeah, you guys should go. I think it's a beautiful country, great people, um, and they. I you know I can thank them now after this experience, but. As I tell you more, I'm like, I wasn't in that mindset at right. that time. <laughs> but um, So I came home, talked to my husband about it, and he's like, okay, let's go. And so I'm like, okay, we'll go to Jamaica, you know. So before that, like, everything was normal. I was working in the corporate world, kind of behind a cubicle and stuff, and just living a normal life, I guess. I'm the from, grind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The nine-to-five grind. Um, that's what I was doing. And so... um 
moving on, <laughs> we ended up going, you know, going to Jamaica and we got to the resort and we were, this is the first time we stayed like a full week at a resort. Usually we would go like maybe five nights where we're like, we're going to just live it up, stay a whole week Heck and, yeah. you know, it's nice. And so we get to the resort, everything's cool, you know, um, the people were nice, um, everything was really cool, you know, and it was it was different because, um, well, I don't think it was that different. But it was everything was decently nice. But I, I do know when we were there, they were trying to get my husband and I to go to a timeshare. And oh yeah, if they, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you know how it is. And so for me, I you know my last name's Love, so I try to be very nice to people and <laughs> loving to all, everybody that I come into contact with. And so when they asked me to go to the timeshare, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, we'll go, you know. <laughs> and they were like, it's at 8 a.m. the next morning. I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll go. No big deal. Well, it's 7.55 the next morning. I'm still, like, in bed. I'm not going. <laughs> it's a vacation, you know? man. I yeah, it's up at 8 a.m. Yeah, and I'm not going to buy it. I'll yeah. be honest. I'm not going to buy the timeshare. And so they called, and they were like, are you guys coming? And <laughs> we were like, Yeah, they're going to no. call. They're going to call. Yeah. They kept ringing. We're like, sorry, we're not going to make it. Not feeling well. And they weren't too happy. So I was just like, okay, whatever. You know, I think that was like day two or three. Because I, I know it was probably day three because we were avoiding them for like the first two days because we knew yeah. it was it was happening. So we're like, okay, I have to turn left and start right. But anyhow, <laughs> so that was, we, you know, we ignored it. Well, we didn't go. And so we kept going and stuff. Well, then, um, I remember, I guess it was day four, or was it day, day four or five? Um, we were kind of laying in the room, kind of tired from like the night before, and we heard a knock at the door. And it was maybe like four or five um, housekeepers were outside. And I was like, what are they doing like, outside? So my husband answered the door, and they were like, is your, um, is your wife in there? And... Um, Anthony was like, yeah, but she's not feeling well. And they're like, oh, no, we still need to see her. And he's like, but she's not feeling well. And they kind of, like, pushed away, like, in the room. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of weird. It was like, but, housekeeping. <laughs> yeah, we're like, we don't need it. We're fine, you know. And they just kind of pushed us a bit. So he's like, oh, and they came and kind of looked at me. I was like, hey, I'm here. I'm chilling, you know. And they were like, oh, okay. And they left. So I'm like, well, that was weird, you yeah. know. It was really weird. But, again, I think that... I'm pretty sure it was like day four or five. And so we're there seven, you know, seven days. So, yeah. um, so I'm like, yeah, that's, that was weird. So we get up and we, um, you know, we go out, you know, around the resort and stuff and we're hanging out. And I remember that night and you can always go back like after experience and be like, whoa, this stuff was kind of weird leading up to this. And I remember taking like pictures on my phone and literally every picture turned out black, Ooh. like we could not see any picture. And I was like, you check the what? lens, right? Make sure the yeah, lens is off or open. Yeah. And it was my camera phone. It was my cell phone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't like a, a digital camera or anything like that. It was yeah. my cell phone. And so I'm like, why are all these pictures back? Like, I still actually have them in my old Samsung just from what, just to validate that this was weird, you know? And, um, and it was only like in our, like our room. So we we're just on the balcony taking pictures and all of them, pitch black no matter what it's so just like, the, you're on the balcony just the ones you took at the balcony though those are the only ones that were yeah black. yeah outside and i i can't remember if it was inside as well i just know there were like a majority of pictures where the screen was all black and we have no idea why and so i'm just like hmm, okay that's again kind of weird but i didn't really think anything of it and um so yeah i think like i said night four or five that was there until we just, you know, hung out the rest of the night. Um, the rest of the time we were there. And like I said, the people were decently nice. Everybody was cool. Except for the the maids that right. the busted maids in. Like, yeah. Housekeeping. Yeah. They, uh, my, my, I, my, I don't want to try to, I don't hope I'm not skipping ahead, but my first thought is, is like, they they act like they are worried you've been murdered. Yeah. Yeah. It, I know. It was, it was very, very weird. Like, they wanted to check up on me to make sure I was okay, but I'm like, I'm fine. Like... And it was like three or four. It, well, yeah, it was like a group of them. And they just kind of pushed away. And I was like, hey, I'm chilling. And then they like left. Wow. So, yeah. Super weird. 
as I go, as I learn more throughout this whole story and stuff. And so, um, once we, you know, after that, we got back home and I think we got home, I believe on a Friday. Cause I remember we said Friday because we went a few days before we had to go back to work, um, to kind of like, you know, revamp and stuff. And so get back Friday, um, had a wedding for a family member on Saturday. So that was super chill. Um, and then Sunday night hit. And so this is where everything kind of turned around. <laughs> so <laughs> this is where it all makes those things. And so it was the Sunday night before we had to go back to work on Monday. So I was sleeping and for some reason I woke up in like the middle of the night in my apartment and I look up and I literally see a like black figure standing in front of me. Mm. and I literally, like, screamed bloody murder because it was so freaky and scary. I was just like, I screamed, and my husband woke up, and he's like, what? And I look at him, and I look back, and it's, like, gone. I've had that so, exact experience. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't that creepy? It's, I'm, like, I, I, I'm waiting to hear. I, 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 I might add in tonight some stuff. I'm wondering, because, honestly, people, mm -hmm. I don't know where the story is going to go. I, I'm my mm -hmm. first time hearing it, but... Uh, oh, yeah. uh, I, uh, people on the know that have watched my show is that I've had a, had a shadow of person experience for, for, it was like a four month terrifying ordeal Whoa. that shaped okay. me. So wow. I might have to, we might have to compare some notes if it's going to involve some shadow beings. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. That, Cause that's exactly the experience is waking up, seeing them at the foot of your bed like that and mm -hmm. freaking out. And the moment you go to look again there, it's gone or you it's flip gone. on the lights, they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly. It was, it's terrifying because you're like, what the heck is that? Am I imagining this? Or, but you know, it's pure terror because the scream I let out was like bloody murder, you know? Right. And so, um, so I remember, yeah, so that was Sunday night. So we get up for Monday and I'm like, okay, my husband goes to work earlier than I do. And so he gets up, um, and I'm like, okay, maybe I was just imagining it, you know? You don't want to believe it. <laughs> so I get up and he he gets ready i'm kind of talking to him and then he leaves and goes to work well i get in the shower and when i get in the shower like it's random like my shower curtain like randomly falls down on me Ooh. just out of nowhere and i'm like what the heck like why is this falling down on me and then i started getting really creeped out and i'm just like this this is weird you know and so i just hurry up and get ready you know and i get to work like regular time everybody's like oh my god you just got back from vacation you're like the first one here and i'm like yeah this <laughs> I just is want to get out of my house <laughs> yeah i had to get the heck out you know and we're we're living in an apartment so it's like you know a lot of people and stuff but um so that was weird well take i'm gonna take the story back maybe because this is september and i know the date that it happened because i was actually rereading some of my old tweets and so um January of that year, one of my um, old co-workers and I were talking, and she basically was like, yeah, my um, son-in-law's, my, or my son's um, girlfriend's mother <laughs> um, got attacked by some demons or something, and she was telling me this, and I was like, first of all, that's crazy. <laughs> and second of all, <laughs> you were you were asking for it then, Marley. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I, I literally said out loud, I hope that never happens to me. I remember saying that oh, just being yeah. like, I pray to God that never happens to me. And you know, Jason, like I grew up in church, a whole like since I was five, went to Sunday school, um, church camps, all all that jazz. And but you know, I read the Bible as well, and they talk about demons all the time, but I never really, I would say, I guess I didn't believe it. You know, like, even though I think you, you and many Christians, it, I think you and yeah. many, many Christians kind of exactly. blow it off. I mean, priests, even priests, I've known priests that, you know, the Catholic church, they have an exorcism, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the, yes. I know priests that don't believe in it, you know? So exactly. it's weird. I'm like, well, your religion does. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't, I don't, under, well, I get it because we kind of gloss over it yeah. because we don't want to believe it i think we don't want to believe it and if we don't if we think we don't believe in it then it's not true you know but right. it is i guess so i was in that mindset and like i said i remember in january i just like i said reread my tech or my tweets from back in the day and i was like oh my gosh that's when it happened when uh, my co-workers you know future 
our son's mother-in-law, it happened to her. And so um, when I got to work that day, I emailed her because uh, we were like, we sat next to each other, but in May of that year, I actually got a new position. So I was upstairs, she was downstairs. So I emailed her, I'm like, hey, um, something crazy happened to me. And um, actually, let me go back one more time. No, no, Anywho, no. Um, my coworker's son's future mother-in-law or son's girlfriend's mom, <laughs> um, <laughs> how it happened on the demonic portion her um, other daughter's son's mom, and it was like a little confusing. She's Native American, and she actually helped them get rid of the demonic that was uh. like attacking her. And so, I reached out to her and said, "Hey, I feel like I saw something. And do you think you could talk to this lady that helped, just in case? Because like I just couldn't get out of my head. You know, like you yeah. don't want to believe it, but you're like, well, maybe I should check up because." that story happened to her, you know, and so I just, you know, asked her about it, and she's like, oh, yeah, um, I'll, I'll check with her, you know, what's your address and um, your phone number, and I'll, I'll give it to her and then see what she says. I'm like, okay, that's cool, and that was probably around 10 a.m. of that day. So um, after, after I got from work, she, I hadn't heard from her, and I actually was tutoring um, one of family friend and so I went to go pick her up from the high school to go have our little tutoring session <laughs> and I get a phone call from my coworker, and she's like hey Marley are you sitting down and I'm like yeah what's going on she's like well I talked to um, my friend I'm like yeah I'm like what you say and she's like yeah so <laughs> basically <laughs> it was never good sign. yeah I was like I was like oh gosh she's like basically someone sent a um demon to attach to you and also you have a ghost in your closet and i said hold on what <laughs> and she was like yeah they sent a, a demonic figure you know i guess like a hex curse i i don't know the official word for it um but they sent something to to try to mess up my life oh so it, no, that's a curse that's a curse yeah and a curse can be carried out by dem demonic entities demi okay there you go so, that makes yes. that makes a lot of sense right there um i never had it explained to me in that way and so that's really cool but um so yeah so i instantly started crying because i'm like what the heck this this <laughs> freaks me out you know like i don't want a demon attached to me like i was paralyzed in fear and i have um my, my my tutor girl with me but she's like kind of a family friend cousin now like really close and stuff but she's with me she's like oh my god and i was like she's like listen you need to go somewhere sit down and um call her you need to call her she said okay and then i'm freaking out about the ghost in my closet as well i'm like what right. the heck like wait, I, you I, know? Saw one. I only saw one yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly I only saw one. Yeah. Like, what the heck is going on but um to go back a little bit my, uh, like, the closet would be, like, there's a kind of a walk-in closet, and it would go to the bathroom from, like, our bedroom, like, in one bedroom part. So, sometimes the door would just, like, randomly pop open, and me and uh, my husband just thought it was, um, like, the airflow and stuff. Right, but, right. That can definitely do that. Yeah, it can. It can. And so... But not usually guess, a closet door so much. It's usually yeah. a, a bedroom door from a, a in a hallway from another bedroom door. You usually shouldn't do oh. it to a closet, because there's not airflow coming oh. in or out of that closet like that you know like it is between two rooms but it could it could possibly yeah yeah well it makes sense but i guess i named but it at those... the time you're looking for logical explanation <laughs> yeah exactly i'm looking for logic and so it made like all of a sudden all these memories start like flooding back in my head like oh oh okay <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like oh that makes sense so I'm like, okay, what do I need to do? I have to tutor. So I'm like, I'll just drive to my grandparents' house because my mom was there. I'm like, she can take her home because, like I said, it was a family friend. And um, I can call um, the lady who's going to help me as well. And I don't say her name because I don't know if she wants to be put out right. there. So yeah, that's why I'm saying the lady that helped me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm just saying my name and not everybody else's. I don't right, want them right. to get <laughs> involved. Um, but so I go to my grandparents' house. And to this day, I still think they think I'm a little cuckoo but it's whatever <laughs> so i go to their house and i'm like crying and i'm like mom somebody <laughs> said that 
there's a demon attached to me and I'm freaking out and there's a ghost in the closet and she's like what I was like I just need people to pray for me as soon as possible and I don't know I'm calling my mother-in-law I'm like can you pray for me please because I you know I believed it because I saw it so right. it'd be different if I didn't see him like I saw it, well, you know. I, I say, you know, my experience of so say I'm going to bring in here is mm-hmm. when I experience a big dark shadow figure. Maybe it was my own fear, but I felt like I could feel the evil. I don't like to call mm. mine demonic. Just so you know, I'm up front with you. I'm I'm agnostic. I question everything. I don't oh, want okay. any particular religion. Uh, I'm very actually interested in religion. Uh, I'm not atheist. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do believe okay. in a higher power. Uh, okay. I just don't quantify it as anything. Like, I don't quantify my experience as it was demonic, but boy, it really, it's in the realm of it. But you mm-hmm. feel, you. when I had that experience, it's like, you know it's evil. Like, yes. there's some, it's just, it is like hits you to the core the moment you experience it, touch it. And maybe mm-hmm. it's our own fear doing that, but I really feel like it's your instincts telling you this is really bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, 100% agree. 100%. It's, I, yeah, I go with the, the demonic and it's yeah it's evil fearful fear i feel like it's like a spirit of you know the demonic too but that's a whole whole nother story we can, we can <laughs> we get, might into. get into yeah yeah we get in there maybe later on but well, um, I would say we might hang it there, and we're going to go to a okay. commercial break here. So okay. uh, we'll come back. People watching on Facebook, just remember, we play music out to Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network. You cannot hear on uh, Facebook because Facebook would not like that, and we could you <laughs> yeah. know, get in big trouble. But you can listen to it at Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network. Go to Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network dot com. Go to the website. Subscribe. Do what you can to help keep this radio network going. Without you, we wouldn't have all these great shows and great hosts. There's so many new shows coming uh, to. L&M. We got Studio B. Check that out. But it's your donations that help keep this radio network going. I don't ask for donations for the show yet. I might in the future, but I do ask if you can help the network help keep these shows going. Please go to L&M Radio Network.com. Do what you can. Donate and subscribe. All right, when we come back, our guest, Marley Love, we're going to continue her story about her paranormal experience. And it, it it's a lot darker than I thought it was going to get. <laughs> we're going to keep talking about a shadow person, boy. I can relate. All right, guys, we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Available now, Troll Spray. Do you have problems with trolls? Do you constantly find yourself turning on the light of truth and find they come out of the woodwork after you? Give your trolls a quick squirt of Troll Spray, and you'll be amazed at how quickly they flee. Troll Spray has been tested on all of the different types of trolls, shills, false prophets, doomsayers, sock puppets, and of course, those ever fearsome hostile radio show hosts. It works on them all. Get Troll Spray today, available only at LM Radio Network. Spray the trolls away with Troll Spray. Tonight on Paranormal Soup, our guest is Marley Love. She is a life coach and also found a dream interpreter. We're going to have to get into that tonight. Uh, but she's sharing with us her paranormal experience that she had. Uh, like I said, it's my first time hearing this story. I just All I had to hear from her was, I have a paranormal experience I've never shared with anybody before. I'd like to come on your show and do it. Boom. You're on my show. Because that's what this, this is why I started doing this. I want to give people a place to be able to tell their story, tell about these experiences that are, are real. And like she said, she was talking to a friend. She didn't believe her friend's story about her her, her mother and son-in-law about her being possessed. Because that's, you know, when you have an experience, it's really hard to believe. But once you have, you want to tell the world, but you know how you felt before you had the experience. You never thought that was real. (laughs) That's how it is with the paranormal. And that's why I do this show, because we got to get it out in the open. We got to talk about these things, because there's something there. There's a key to what's going on around us. The reality isn't what we think it is. And there, there's forces in this world we, we are not aware of that are shaping our lives. That's why I do this. All right, let's get back to our guest. Still there with me, Marley? Yep, I'm still here. All right, so I don't know how you want to where you want to continue at on, on this story. So you went to, uh, uh, you got this contact with, you said she was Native American. The, uh, yes. The, yes. Like a healer kind of deal, right? Um, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, kind of, I guess that's 
what she called herself. And, sure. and, and she, so she remotely, in a way, kind of what they call like remotely viewed your situation. And, and she yeah. saw this. And I know mm-hmm. people that can do that. I, I believe it is possible. So Definitely. Oh, yeah. I totally believe it's possible as well. And so, um, she, yeah, so she saw it. So basically my coworker said, when you get to, you know, I went to my grandparents' house. She's like, when, when you get there, um, she... I think I called, I believe I called her, I believe I, yeah, I called her. So I called her. And so I was like, hi, um, you know, I'm the girl, Marley, you know, and she's like, okay, yeah, here's my song. So she first asked me, and this is really interesting. She asked me like, Marley, what do you believe in? I guess she wanted to see what I believed in. So I was like, like it, I've said like this whole show, you know, I was like, I'm a Christian, you know, I believe in Jesus and stuff. And so she's like, okay, so, all right, cool. Well, I'm going to, um, pray for it to leave and I hope it will you know I'm like okay great you know what do I need to do <laughs> so right. she's like just sit down <laughs> sit down relax so she when I was talking with her I don't really realize I don't feel like she audibly like said it out loud I feel like she was kind of like praying like Stanley or in her head or you know kind right. of not as forceful as I'll tell you like later on and so she's like she told me she's like he's too he doesn't want to leave and he's too strong for me to do it right now and so i start freaking out obviously like even more because i'm like yeah how are you gonna go to sleep tonight with that yeah exactly i'm like just can't i can't do this you know and so she's like but i know someone else he's another native american man and this man is actually blind but he's a lot better and he can he can help you and so i'm like okay whatever like whatever it takes and stuff (laughs) and so (laughs) and so she said, I'm going to call him because I guess she didn't want to give his number out. Makes sense. And because um, I after this experience, I text her like all the time, like, hey, I have this feeling. And she's like, calm down, Marley. And so I, 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 gotta like, ask, I, I want to ask you, Marley, what what made yeah. you um, I mean, you had the experience, you know, had the, you know mm-hmm. that definitely shocked you. But what yeah. made you believe that she was able to tell what was going on in your home? What, what, what was it made you feel like she was right? She was. Well, First, you know, what I kind of like saw, you know, and then my coworker, I really trusted her. Yeah. And I, I believed that because like, even like I said, I know I didn't believe that it could, I guess I didn't believe it could happen to me, but you know, (laughs) you see all the movies, you know what I mean? And so you're like, okay, I guess that can kind of happen. And I don't know. I just, I just believed her, which is yeah, really hard. I don't know. Something, I told just, you to tr- <laughs> something told you to trust her on it. Yeah, something told me to trust her, and she seemed genuine. And like I said, I trusted my coworker wholeheartedly. Like we worked together, and we talked for so many, you know, all the time and stuff. And so, yeah, I just really believed her, I trusted her. So um, that. I know nobody ever asked me that question before. I'm like, I don't know why I <laughs> well, trusted well, her. The reason I ask, the reason I ask is, you know, you, you, I, part of me, you know. Maybe it's because I am in the paranormal field and I know there are frauds out there and stuff like that mm-hmm. would be like worried. Is this woman going to start taking me down like, oh, I can't do it, but this person can. And then like, that'll be 350 or, you know, like, yes. you, you know, was she asking for money? That's that's one question I'd be asking. Yeah. And she didn't. I, that's I, a, okay. I begged her. I said, please, can I send you like after this, this experience? Um, I said, please, can I send you flowers? Can I send you a gift card? You know, because I was so thankful right. that she helped me. She's like, no, I do not accept any payments. For yeah, so she has nothing to gain by helping you. Exactly. So that's, a good, that's a good indicator that she's exactly. the real deal. So true. So, so true. I'm so thankful. We, Like I said, we still talk to this day and stuff. So made a friend out of it in the long run. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, I'm going to have this guy call you. Okay, I'm going to call him, have him call you. I'm like, okay, awesome. So I'm at my grandparents' house, and it was around 30 minutes. So, you know, like I said earlier, I was kind of freaking out. The same people pray for me. She was like, have, have people pray for you. She told me to do that. And so, I, again, texting everybody, just like, just pray. pray. And they're like, okay, let's round do it. Round them up. <laughs> yeah, round up everybody. And so um, after that, the um, the guy calls me. And so he didn't even ask me, like, anything i guess like i pick up like hello he's like hey you know so and so called me i'm like yeah and he's like okay let me look and he's like okay i see him 
there on you. Like I didn't even, she didn't even tell him. She said, call this lady. She didn't tell him my backstory or anything. Right, Cause right. I guess they don't want to know, you know, right. I don't know. Um, and so he was like, he asked me these questions. He's like, have you been like participating in like witchcraft or anything like that? And I was like, no. <laughs> and he was like, have you been like to the island or anything lately? And I was like, yeah, I just got back from Jamaica. And he was like, yeah, that's probably what happened. You know, again, no judgment. To, there's amazing people in right. Jamaica. There's amazing people everywhere, you know. But um, I guess, you know, a lot of voodoo is prevalent out there. And, like, voodoo is prevalent, you know, in other places and stuff. And so that's, I guess, that's how they, they got to me, you know, somebody that dabbles in, like, voodoo stuff. While you were on like vacation. Yeah. yeah, while I was on vacation, yes. And it takes me back to um, the ladies that were trying to come into my room. Right. For some unknown reason, you know, or the pictures turning out black, like, after that and stuff. And so I'm like, whoa, all this is piecing together, like, in my mind. Because it, it was weird, but I didn't think of anything until, you know, that moment and stuff. And so he was like... Um, He's like, I can, I can get him off of you. So, he's like, where are you? I'm like, I'm my grandparents. He's like, go home, and we'll do it there. I'm like, okay. And so, um, I'm like, okay. I told my mom, you know, take, go home. Tell my grandparents bye. You know, keep praying for me and stuff. And I'm like driving home. But my grandparents, I guess, I lived like uh, about ten minutes from them. So obviously, I'm like freaking out because I'm like by myself in this car, and I know like the demon dude is like next to me so or around into me, it. You know? yeah so i'm like oh god this is super creepy and stuff and i found like this radio station i played like all christian music i'm like blasting it and just being like ah jesus you know and just <laughs> <laughs> help me you know and i get home my, my husband and he's like at the apartment he's like praying and stuff and like i said I'm Christian. So if I'm doing too much Christian stuff, just let me know. But No, no. It's yeah, nothing, that's wrong case, so. <laughs> nothing wrong okay. with that. Nothing wrong with that. Awesome. Um, so he's like praying. with like the Bible out and stuff. And, um, and so I get home. I'm like, okay. I guess I guess I did have his phone number then. Oh, yeah. Well, he called me on my cell phone. Right. So I had the phone number then. So I called him back. I was like, okay, I'm at home. So he was like, okay. So I put him on speaker. So he put me on speaker phone. And so he's like, okay. And then here's what exactly what he said he's like in the name of jesus leave and and he said it like i don't know if it's one or two times maybe three but i just remember i'm just saying in the name of jesus leave in the name of jesus leave and he was like okay he's gone i was like uh just like that yeah. <laughs> he's like yeah he's like, gone. are you I'm like, sure <laughs> yeah yeah i gotta like, sleep here you know? yeah i know i'm like okay he's like yep he's gone and um i'm like all right and so I, I was like okay you <laughs> know like that was easy and then um he's like okay well thank i was like well thank you he's like oh you're welcome i was like oh whoa, wait wait um she also said there's a ghost in the closet too <laughs> can you get yeah, rid of yeah let's, let's make sure he goes too <laughs> yeah yeah he has to go and so he's like oh hold on he prays like oh yeah okay i see him over there and he's like okay put the phone on speaker i'm like okay and he's like, okay, I guess he, like, told him to go to the light. He's like, go right. to the light, you know, da, da, da. He's like, okay, he's gone. I'm like, oh, all right. And he's like, he's like an old, like an old man or something like that. I'm like, oh, interesting. Died in the apartment. I'm like, all right, no. Now, no longer your apartment. I actually named the ghost Cecil. So I'm like, Cecil, it's no longer your apartment. You need to go to the light and get. get Why Cecil? This. I have no idea. Just came Why out of the thing. Cecil. Yeah, the name Cecil just popped in my head. And so I just. I just used it. Yeah, <laughs> no idea why I named it. Makes you wonder, though. You know, how did know. you get the name? Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if his name was Cecil. Who knows? I don't know. But, um, but yeah. So after that, I asked him. I was like, "Hey, can you pray for me so this never happens again?" You know, and he was like, "Yeah, definitely." So, he like prays. And I'm like, "Okay, whew, thank you." You know, and I'm like, "I guess it's, guess it's done." You know, everything's cool. But there's still more. <laughs> I had a feeling. I had <laughs> yeah, a feeling. Yeah, there's still more. So, well, before we go, um, I, I'm going to say this. So, uh, the guy that helped us, he was like, "Do you?" He's like, "Did you see him physically?" I was like, "What I saw was a black shadow. You know, a black shadow and kind of longer, um, like something in the back. You know, but black shadow." 
So like a was, coat? Like, like not really a, a coat, but like kind of like dreadlocks. Ooh. Long dreadlocks. Oh, but oh. that's like the that shadow. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of it. And so this creeps me out every time I say it, but Yeah. I you know, a lot of times they need to be exposed because they don't want people to talk about this so people could be in bondage, you know. So yeah. I'm gonna say it. But um so he's like, Yeah, I saw him. He, he had like yellow eyes, sharp teeth, and kind of like dreadlocks, long, long hair in the back. And so I'm like, that just again confirms what I saw. You right. know what I mean? I, I didn't see the all the intricate parts of it. Thank God I didn't see that. But <laughs> <laughs> can't handle that. Um but I saw, you know, the shadow and stuff. So I again think the guy and I was like, Oh, whoa, okay. But even though it happened, now I'm like, okay, that happened to me. And I'm, of course, still scared out of my mind. So I'm like, I, I'm fearful. I never want to experience anything like that again. You know, like you don't want to see that ever again. And, and, and your perceptions of what you've seen in Hollywood, you expect if somebody's getting rid of something at your house, like the walls to bleed or the room to yeah. shake or yeah. something to happen more than just like, oh, it's gone. Yeah, uh, exactly. Okay. <laughs> like, like, how do I know that? You know? Yeah, I know. It, it was... I was like, that's easy, you know? So I, I mentioned earlier, like, my husband, he went, goes to work early. So I that night, you know, he goes to sleep. I didn't really sleep very well, obviously. Um, but he would get up. I think I had to be at work um, around 7 a.m. So I believe my husband was like, 6.30. But he had to be at work at, like, 5 a.m. So when he left, I got up, too. And I'm like, I'm just going to go to my mom's house. I can't stay in that apartment <laughs> by myself, you know, because I'm still kind of freaked out. Um, even though, and you know, the shower curtain didn't fall that morning. So I'm like, okay, that's this a good is sign. a good sign. Yeah, yep. it's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so we get to my mom's house. Everything's cool. Well, then I think a few days went by and everything, like, I still felt weird. Like, I'm like, I still feel like there's still something like the demon might be gone, but there's still like something in the atmosphere. You know what I mean? Like, kind of felt something and so the energy's wrong yeah exactly yeah. so um the lady that helped me she told me to kind of stage so i got some sage and stuff I'm like okay that's cool and all that but um i remember me and my husband were sitting there watching tv and our couch kind of faced the kitchen and on top of like the refrigerator there was paper plates up there and so all of a sudden like randomly the plates just flew off the top of the refrigerator oh i'm nowhere and I'm like, there's no big breeze that would do that. And so I'm like, that's weird, you know? And I'm like, Some, something still isn't right. And so obviously I reached out to the lady again. Like, I had her cell phone. And so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like, her friend. Uh, it didn't work. Yeah, I'm like, something, something's missing. So she's like, okay. So I text to her. And I was like, hey, um, can you take a look at the house one more time? Because there's something, you know, something not, not right. And she's like, okay, I'll take a look. So she looked and she's like, yeah, like the demon was gone. He was, he was vanished. But this is, again, so weird. So she said there was a portal in our apartment that people that were at the resort were using to come back and forth to see, like, their spirits coming back and forth. I... Again, I have never heard anything like this, but yeah. I was like, that makes sense. And so they were u the portal that they were using, well, they needed um, a um, some type of memorabilia, I guess. They, they were using our souvenirs that we bought from the resort. They put, like, their energy on it, and they were using the portal. And here's how I know yes. she told the truth, is because we had all the um, souvenirs that we brought for people. They were hanging on our closet door. Like in a bag, so you just had them hanging there to give to people, you know, later on. Well, she's like, "There's a portal by like your closet door," and she's like, "What is there?" And I'm like, "The souvenirs." And she's like, "They're using that to come back and forth. They're just curious on where you guys live and what you guys are doing." I said, and these are spirits that were like in Jamaica at that resort. Yes, yes. And she explained to me she saw the dude that was doing it, and she explained to me what he looked like. And I know exactly who it was because I remember seeing this guy at the, um, they had like a pharmacy there, yeah, kind of yeah, like a yeah. drugstore. 
that was the dude that worked there. Explain exactly what he looked like. I'm like, that's that dude. And he was very um, interesting looking. You know what I mean? Just kind of yeah. like a uh, little kind of, he's just interesting looking. And so I'm like, that's that dude. And so she's like, listen, we're going to close the portal. And like, they put it on a few souvenirs and then even like, I don't drink this rum anymore, but it was like Appleton rum or something. You know, the rum that's. There's, was this all Jamaica. stuff you got at this drugstore? It was also we got at the resort. Oh, they the had resort. a drugstore, and then they had a souvenir shop ah. there as well. So I, I don't know how they did it to just us. I, I don't know. Which did is you like have really any weird. like really? I mean, did, what was your interactions with this guy? You know, when he you know it was there? cool. We were we just talked to him. We we're like, hey, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, very nice, friendly. Like we saw I. We saw him one time in the drugstore, and then we just saw him chilling at the resort, like, just there. And like I said, we were there for a week. So, you know, when you're there for a week, you kind of know people, and you see them all the time. So I I thought we were you, you just chill. It had to make you start wondering. It's like, did I slight them in some way yeah, that I didn't I realize? You know, like, they wanted to put this curse on me. What did I, I do? I mean, like I can, I work retail, you know, I, you know, yeah. I, I see my, I, I had my, uh, I've had my bad customer experiences and mm-hmm. maybe if I had the power to curse him, I, it might be tempting, <laughs> you know, like, you know, yeah. like, but you know, people are people, people have bad days, you know, you know, so you mm-hmm. wonder if like you, you know, slighted them in some way, you know, like that, yeah. that, that they were, I mean, or did you just do it to do it? Cause I mean, you wonder how many were in on it too, because the women, you yeah. said the maids, you know, the house, exactly. housekeeping coming yeah. in to, to see how you were. It's like, they wanted to see if what he was doing was affecting you or whatever. Yeah. That's I, what I, I feel I, like. I a hundred percent agree. And I, I don't know if it started when we didn't go to the timeshare. That's why I felt like, oh, was yeah. that it? Wow. Those like, timeshare people really don't I mess know. around. <laughs> They don't mess around. Go if you tell them you're going. Go to the presentation, okay? Mm. Or just say you're not going to go. Yeah. Just tell them straight up you're not going to go. I didn't and think. I, I didn't. That. that didn't even think about that. I remember you know yeah. about the timeshare thing, you know, because yeah. I, 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 you probably don't watch it, but I, uh, I'm a big fan of South Park, and they had an episode yeah. where they go to like a <laughs> ski resort and they have a timeshare thing, and the timeshare people just they said just one more minute, we're going to show you this, and then you're gone, and you can go skiing, and then they they never get to go skiing. Like the timeshare people <laughs> keep them there the whole time, and that's that's you know you wonder you know I. Yo, what was, have, was the timeshare people? Did they uh, were they uh, connected to the resort? Like or? Yeah, they were. Like it was within the resort. Was they wanted you to by the timeshare to stay at that resort? I'm right. pretty. I'm pretty sure. And so they were all connected. They were all friends. You know what I mean? They. That's what I was wondering. Chilling together. Yeah, I really believe that. And that. Yeah, I I think it's that. And I don't know. Again, I go back and forth because. Now, like, you know, at the beginning of the show, I said this kind of propelled me into my destiny, you know, because I started understanding, kind of seeking more and saying, what was this? Why did this happen to me and stuff? And so, again, I don't know if um, these people kind of saw that I would be out there helping other people, trying to find their purpose and get them on the right path. And they said, I want to stop that as soon as possible. I, I don't know. Is that why that happened to me? Or was it just because I didn't go to a timeshare? I I don't know. I really think you didn't go to the timeshare. I yeah, really do right. think it's that. That's just like oh that that damn American, yeah, you know. And then yeah. when they they they're like oh we'll show her we'll put a curse exactly. on her. Exactly. And yeah. let's go get what's his name over at the pharmacy. He knows how to do that. You know. You know what? Exactly. Exactly. And it's crazy. It's insane. And so whenever I found that out, I was like, well, that makes sense. You know, it really does. Because why is this energy feeling weird? Why? did the plastic or the stuff just fall off the refrigerator for no no reason and so she's like first of all get rid of all those souvenirs and i'm like okay thank you i we're throwing those all away and so she did something like again i i don't know um exactly what she did it was like somehow closed the portal of them being able to come in you know once yeah. we got rid of the portal or the the stuff you know, you kind of clear the energy out, and then uh, again, we like kind of sage and stuff as well. And so, and then prayed a whole bunch and um, made sure that it was done. You know, and so that that really shook me, the whole portal thing, because I was like, 
First of all, how many people? How many times are they doing this to people? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're not the only tourist to come to Jamaica to their resort and say, yeah, I'll do that timeshare and then ditch out on it. Like, yeah. it, it probably happens all the time. Maybe you were just the, the last, the final straw. They're like, man, we're tired of this. <laughs> we're tired, yeah. Like, we're going to make somebody <laughs> pay. Taken. And sadly, it had to be you, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, it, yeah, it, it was crazy. It was truly insane. But once, you know, once we got rid of that, you know, I still had like experiences, which is really weird. But now I'm like, I understand what those experiences are. And I'm like, okay, I can kind of get rid of them and stuff. But she, yeah, so we prayed, we got rid of all that, closed the portal. Those people just want to jump back. And she said that they just wanted to see what was going on. But I think it was more because I think they wanted to see what was going on because they knew that they cursed me with this demon and they wanted to see my life, you know, dissolve because. I believe, as I've learned more and more, like when you know you have these demonic entities around you, not only does it cause fear, but it can cause sickness. It can cause um, your finances to go horrible. Bad luck. Yeah, bad luck. Just you know, and sometimes death. Honestly, well, you know, if you get sick, um, I, 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 it can cause death. You know, my experience with the the shadow person experience is what mm-hmm. I call it. Um, yeah, I had bad luck. I had relationships just fall apart. And I was only 17. So at the time, oh, a lot wow. of these things seemed like a big deal. But, um, you know, my cat died. Um, Whoa. You know, like just things like that. You know, it's just like it is like bad energy all around. And it wasn't just me. It affected actually two other people. And I, I don't think mine was a curse, but it could have been related to somebody else's curse from a long time ago. I think I, I picked this mm-hmm. thing up from a spot where a, a lot of people mysteriously died on these train tracks. But um, but it, when you talk about the bad luck and you talk about the energy, I'm like, man, that's just, you know, even though mine I don't think was a curse, it's exactly the same with thing. And it, it deals with that dark entity, that demonic entity, um, mm-hmm. that force or that power. They want to ruin you. And they like mm-hmm. they know your weakest points. Mm-hmm. And, and they will attack them. Mm-hmm wholeheartedly because it's like you know because you know we know the spiritual world and the physical world oh the spiritual world is just as real you know as the physical world and so i find that whenever we um you know get attacked by the demonic you know some people see it some people don't it's like it's an open door in the spiritual world and then they come in you know like there's a we we open the door somehow like you said you kind of picked it up from going to those train tracks so that's kind of yeah. like Opening the door, you know, and challenging it. I challenged it. Exactly. Uh, that's that's why I, I gave it permission. There you go. Yeah, and then the door was open, and he, they come on in, and they, you know, they kind of mess you up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, let, uh, we're gonna go to we're gonna hold the story there for a second. We're gonna go to commercial break again here. Uh, for people watching on Facebook, just remember we play music out to Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network that you cannot hear on Facebook. Don't freak out. We will be back. Uh, you will hear silence, but we will be back with our guest Marley Love talking about her paranormal experience. This is why we do this show is we get to hear these stories, and that's what I I love meeting new people and hearing their paranormal stories. That's one of the reasons I don't hide who I am about the paranormal. I tell everybody I'm into it. People at my work know because I want to hear. I want to know because I get the greatest stories from people like this one tonight. All right. When we come back, uh, we'll probably, well, we'll hold off. We might bring the phone lines when we come back from this commercial break. All right, guys, just a few minutes. We'll be right back. Tonight on Paranormal Soup, our guest is Marley Love. She's a life coach, dream interpreter. But tonight we're talking about her paranormal experience. I love having these stories on the show, especially when it's her first time telling it to people. Um, and I love relating. I, I can't help but relate my own experience, especially when they when somebody comes out and says they saw a shadow person. I know a lot of paranormal experiences are dark shadows, but it always piques my interest. And curses. Imagine just going on a vacation somewhere, coming back and having this stuff happen to you, and somebody tell you you've been cursed. It makes you wonder... <laughs> when you go, if you, you know, you're hearing this story, I'm talking about going on one of these vacations soon. Like, be really nice. Maybe go on the timeshare. <laughs> really do it. Uh, you, you wonder, you know, when you go to these other countries, what, you know, the beautiful places, great cultures, but they have their religious beliefs and their own ideas, and there's a power behind it. What, what happens when you might have ticked them off? <laughs> You didn't mean to. It happens. It's customer service. All right, let's get back to our guest.
All right. Still there with us, Marley? Yep, I'm here. So, yeah, you know, do do you think now, do you wish you would have gone on the timeshare? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I would still say no. Or I'd probably still say yes and not show up. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it even worse. If you just said no, yeah, they might have not have cursed you. I agree. You but just said I no. Guess, that passive yeah. aggressive like, made them mad. <laughs> I know. But it's like, it's crazy because they, like, when I tell you, you know, you have that long walk, you know, after you lead to like the pool and then like to the beach when you're on like a resort. Well, they have like five or six people lined up before you can get to the pool. <laughs> and so if you tell them no, the next person is going to ask. The next person is going to ask. So you're just like, yeah, I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> just let me have fun, please. And they're probably like, they're like, we got one. We got one that's going to come. We got yeah. one. And then you don't show up. They're all sitting around show. like, man. Yeah. They got, yeah. They got Who, who's that voodoo guy you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, joke's on them. It didn't work. So, well, <laughs> it, it did a little free. bit. Yeah, it did a little bit, but we tr- I triumphed in the long run, so that was good. <laughs> so after they, uh, you know, this second bout, you know, after you had the plates yeah. fly off, the paper plates and all that, and yeah. you had, had them clear it out, was was, you yeah. know, was that the end? or? See, that was that was the end of, like, that story. You know, um, mm. I the Jamaica people didn't mess with me ever again, <laughs> um, which is good. And I even asked um, the lady that helped me, I was like, can I call them and just be like, I want a refund because I got cursed. That, uh, yeah, I got cursed. That's not cool. And she's like, no, I wouldn't even bother yeah. because you don't want it. <laughs> you know, yeah, they really else. might mess with you then. Yeah, you know? I don't feel like having that much of a battle. But um, <laughs> so that was done with them. But I was still kind of, like I said, still kind of afraid um, because, like, what the heck? I just was fearful that I didn't want to ever ever to happen to me again like i said earlier i don't want that to ever happen so i started like studying a lot more i'm like so why does this happen to people what was it what what do you do you know if that does happen and like i was saying just before we went into the break i really understood how um real the spiritual world is and how and how real you know obviously the physical world is like where we live and stuff and so um Again, that just kind of got me starting to, well, long story short, life coach and then dream interpretation. And then um, I started studying, like, the demonic in a way and, like, how it works and, you know, basically, like, the devil in the long run because he's the head of, like, and the, the other demons are, like, his minions to go do whatever and stuff. And so I was just like, I just need to understand this because I remember, you know, like I said, I'm a Christian, so I was reading in the Bible. It says, like, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And so I had no idea that this dude, that this was, you know, could happen to me, you know, right. the devil is real and all that stuff. So I'm like, what do, what do I do next time? You know? <laughs> <laughs> that, you, you're going to take another vacation. There's going to be another yeah, timeshare. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm not going to always, I'm going to probably make people mad at some point. You know, what do I do? And so um, I found out that you know we we do have the power to get rid of them as well and even if um somebody does try to curse you it doesn't have to stick you can see it up front just be like you know what in the name of jesus leave and they've got to go you know and i even started learning more and i feel like someone that's on this call probably needs to hear this but like we talked earlier a lot of the sickness and the bad luck, all that stuff that's happening to them, that probably means that you have some type of demonic entity that's around you that you need to get rid of in order for you to be set free, you know? Because, right. like, it doesn't just happen by chance. Like, if you have, if everyone in your family, you know, has, like, cancer or something like that, or everybody's, like, alcoholic in your family, like, there is some type of generational demon there, something, and you can get rid of it and you can be set free and you can live a great life in the long run. So, well, you, I don't know why I said that. No, no, but it, you know, you, <laughs> I, for me, you know, I've, I've always been interested in the paranormal mm-hmm. and ghost stories, but I definitely started looking into the demonic 
and getting a real big interest in that after my experience. I still don't, mm-hmm. I, my, the way I am is I, I don't like, like I said, quantify things, but I would say it was demonic, you know, and what mm-hmm. its approach was to me. Uh, and I went through four months of it uh, that were completely oh, crazy. Um, and it did end for me basically, you know, I didn't say Jesus, I said God. I said, God, mm-hmm. help me, please, God, wow. save me from this. Uh, while it was levitating me up off my bed and throwing me down. Whoa. And, wow. uh, and something did save me, you know, and, and yes. I, that's why I've, I've always said I believe in a higher power. I believe in a God and a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I don't quantify it as that I'm a Christian or, or, or um, any any religion, but I mm-hmm. do believe in a higher mm-hmm. higher power after that incident. And I did look really start looking and reading a lot about possession and demonic. Uh, and, and curses too, because yeah. I found a lot of similarities to to uh, what people go through in demonic attacks to also what people go through under when they're cursed. Uh, and and one of the things I found is that you know for some people you know at least back in ancient times you know where they believe people would summon the you know the make spells work or curses work demons had to carry it out. Mm-hmm. You know it's mm-hmm. like uh, King Solomon you know he had he had the control over the demonic entities to build mm-hmm. his temple, you know, like to use the magic, it was demons that would make, make it happen. Uh, and I, I think, you know, with curses, it, 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 it's got to be some kind of dark energy or dark force like that that they're using. They're drawing upon that kind of power to do something like that to a person, to be able to have that yeah. ability. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I, you know, I believe that there's the devil, like he's, you know, the top dog, in the demonic and then it's he has um kind of like his own little army and they ha- they go and they have assignments that people to mess with and to do things with and some people again it just might be because um they have like an open door that we talked about earlier some people right. they are sent because of a certain thing and there's certain path there's certain destiny you know like right that happening you know, that happening to you definitely happened for a reason. I think Probably, so. yeah, definitely. And, like, you're on here now trying to educate people about this stuff, which is great because people need to know um, about this. Because when you don't know, then you, when you think it's happening to you, then you just think you're crazy. And then that um, I mean, leads into, like, a whole other. If you hadn't gotten, um, think about this. If you had not mm-hmm. had the friend who had mm-hmm. this connection to somebody spiritually to help you on this, what would you have known? Exactly. What would you have known? You wouldn't have known it was what was there. You know, you wouldn't have known how to deal with it. You would have tried to just try to rationalize it and rationalize it mm-hmm. and, and try to blow it off like most people do, but then you mm-hmm. wouldn't realize what it's doing to your life around you. You wouldn't realize the connections. You know, so it makes you wonder how many people are going through this kind of thing and have no clue that it's demonic or have no clue that it's some kind of spiritual force. They keep exactly. writing it off. Yeah, and it's like, and then their life keeps, I tell people, if you feel like your life, um, you keep taking, you go five steps forward, but like three steps back or seven steps back, that keeps happening to you, there's probably a demon there. And you need to get rid of it. And it's because sometimes no matter what you do, if that person has a stronghold over your life, over your family, it's going to happen, you know. And even, you know, I'll go back to, you know, the Bible at the time. The Bible, it says that a lot of times the sins of um, your fathers, your yeah. mothers come down to you, you know. Yes, it's that's so, something that really interests me too. Gen- g- uh, yes. Demonic generational hauntings. Curse. Yes, yes. I call them like generational curses. Or stuff. that too, so, generational yeah. curses, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I've got and to so interview have- people that have like, experienced that. Um, Whoa. One, I, I'll, I'll never forget one story. It was a girl I knew. Um, her family members always died on a certain date after their, their her great-grandfather uh, took like, an, like uh, a, a car uh, and tried to kill him and his wife, pregnant wife, uh, by ramming it into a, a gas pump. And oh she gosh. jumped out. He he perished, and then after, and it was on that date. After that date, family members would die on that date. Everybody would like try not to go outside on that date. That's how seriously the family took it. Um, oh my goodness! And I would be like, you know, would you guys get together? She's like, no, we don't want to be in the same room. <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh! And then I knew another one where the the women in in the family would all see the same hag 
uh, mm-hmm. eventually at some point, you know. So yeah. y- you wonder how many people go through this because it's something in the back in their past, their family's past that mm-hmm. uh, gives it something a doorway. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I even attribute it to like poverty as well. I think that's a generational curse because oh, God, God yeah. wants us. Yeah. You know, like, oh, God, God yeah. Live abundantly, you know, like, so if, you know, your family's, everybody's poor all the time, you guys can't seem to get out of it. You gotta get rid of that generational curse, get rid of that demon, you know, and it can be, I always say there's like spiritual ways to get rid of it. You know, you get rid of the demon and you're good there, but then, you know, you also gotta do like the physical stuff. Like, if you're not working, definitely get a job so you can, you know, start applying and get out of that poverty because money's not going to just, like, fall down out of the sky or anything like that. But you always got to take care of the spiritual side first so then your physical life can get back in order and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's all very, very interesting. And I've learned without this experience... I never would have known any of this stuff. Yeah, because b- before yeah. this, you were you said you worked in the corporate in a corporate field or corporate yeah. office and that. Mm-hmm. So after this experience, you started you know doing research, but y- y- it led you to become a life coach. Yeah, because um, once I had this experience, and I was learning. I'm like stuff like this doesn't just happen to you. Like seeing it is different than having experience. I don't know. Like, so I'm like, this had to happen for a purpose. Like, then I just started asking God, like, what is my purpose in life? Like, why did this happen to me? Why did you allow me to see it? Because everybody doesn't see those things. Like, what is my purpose? And I just started seeking and I'm like, okay, no, I don't want to work in this corporate world anymore. This isn't what I'm supposed to do. You know, it's like a light bulb kind of went off. Right. And I was like, I know I want to help people because if someone didn't help me, I wouldn't be like where exactly. I was. Exactly. Oh no, no, you no. Know? That's you see. I my the reason I got into the paranormal is I had no one to turn to, mm. and I did it. I, I, I except God. God was the only yeah. thing that that saved me. I will tell that to anybody. It was God. That's why I'm not. Mm-hmm. I never could be an atheist. I'm a gnostic. I, I yeah. I'm more, I, I'm wired to question everything. I I I, I question everything. Uh, But I'm also open to belief, too. You know, I'm Uh also open to the idea and the possibility. But the reason I got into this and and wanting to do a show like this is because I had no one to turn to. I had no one to talk to about this. No no forum I could find at that time where I could talk to people that are experiencing the same thing. uh, Because you really think you're going crazy. Yeah, definitely. Well, especially you. Yeah, Yeah. well, you know, but that's how I think these things become so powerful is they they don't you know like you said maybe it was your life purpose you know to do this Mm -hmm. and they saw that and that's why they attach you because uh they don't want people to know i think that's their power is the the lack of knowledge about it exactly that is definitely their power they if if they're quiet about it they can sneak in and just ruin your life and then go off and be like oh it wasn't me that was you. You did it. You know, yeah. you made your life horrible because you made bad decisions and stuff. Not true. That's the devil. Yeah. It and makes you wonder what, what other lives areas they affect. I, you know, I think about, mm-hmm. I mean, people have to be responsible for themselves. You know, exactly. Yeah. You, you can't blame yes. everything on demons, but yes. But I've, I don't know about you. I go to a bar. If I go to, mm-hmm. like, especially the dingy ones, but I, I, I swear <laughs> there's bars and even casinos, like, there's this aura or like this darkness there. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I swear, my, my I, I always there's a Tibetan belief of the hungry ghosts, uh, mm. that the dead hang around to live out the stuff that they can't live out anymore, uh, mm. addictions oh. like gambling yeah. and drinking, and they 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 live it out through the uh, the living people. Yeah, a- and yeah. people might not realize that that addiction, you know, it is you you have to fight, you have to take responsibility for it, but there might be another force behind it too. And, and think about families yes. that that family members. I, my family, you know, my my dad's side of the family had a lot of it. Has had a lot of addiction. You know, they say it's it's genetic, um, yeah. but you makes you wonder what kind of dark forces could you know follow you know family members or or by people opening up a doorway that you know it leads to something that makes them do things that they never did before. Uh, you know, like yeah. drug habits and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Because you know, a lot of people that do. Um, are addicted to drugs. You're like, God, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. You know, they say oh, yeah. that a lot of times. They're like, I don't want to do this, but I have to. You know, or sometimes they say, my mind's telling me to. And I've learned through my studies as well, the number one way 
a lot of times that the enemy, I call it the devil the enemy because he is our enemy, um, he gets uh, to us is our thoughts. And so these people go around roaming, you know, the spirits go around roaming and they'll throw a thought like at your mind. They can't read your thoughts, but they'll throw, you know, like, oh, um, sometimes you'd be looking in the mirror and be like, oh, you look horrible. And you start believing like, oh, I look horrible. And that opens the door. Oh, and you look crazy. You look this. You know, and it starts making you feel bad about yourself. And when you feel bad about yourself, you start doing, like, bad mistakes, dumb things to make you feel even worse about yourself. And then it just, like, it can revolve into, you know, tumbling into What's even that, more. That small inner voice in your, your head. It sounds mm-hmm. like your voice, but maybe it's not. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Maybe it's something else trying to uh, influence you. I... I, I, I try to be aware of that after my experience because this thing definitely tried to get in my head. Uh, yeah, whoa. I, this makes me wonder about you being the dream interpretations and stuff. Did mm-hmm. you, when you were going through this, did you experience negative dreams too? I don't really remember my dreams at that time because um, I didn't write them down. Right. So I, I'm like, I don't know if I did or not. I can't really remember that. But I remember... Um, watching the show which you might want to watch it's really cool it's called it's supernatural and it's kind of like your show um but they just bring on kind of uh, a lot of pastors sometimes evangelists yeah. that had like you know experiences with the demonic angels you know um pro- prophetic people prophets as well um and so i started watching that show and they would tell me about how important my dreams were i didn't even know like i didn't know that they were that important <laughs> as, was, like, boy, as i was go, um, growing up and stuff i was like oh my dreams are important so i started writing them down and realizing yeah god speaks to you all the time in your dreams and um and if you have a recurring dream he's really trying to talk to you He's like, I'm trying to tell you something, but you're not listening, so I had to wait till you go to sleep yeah. to tell you, you know? And God's so, like, really symbolic as well. So um, I was just always interested in it. And so then once I started coaching, I was like, you know what? I really want to do dream interpretation because I've been writing down my dreams and just studying them in general. I'm like, well, I can do this for other people. So I um, studied from some greats like Doug Addison, James Gall, a few other people that are and the prophetic feel of dream interpretation. And then also like dreams belong, you know, to God. And so when I interpret, I, I pray a lot and I just say, Holy Spirit, help me interpret this dream. Um, I go with other symbols, go to the Bible, and then it all, all comes together <laughs> after that. And so but, I love it. Well, the, the dream interpretation, you know, you say, you know, mm-hmm. it comes from God and that, you know, I've had a mm-hmm. lot of crazy experiences with dreams. And we might save some of the, we'll, we'll talk more about this here after the next commercial break and we'll open up. Sorry, I had somebody trying to call in. I said, maybe we'll do the phone lines and I forgot to mention, no, we're going to do the phone lines right after this commercial break. We'll open them up Ooh, the yeah. last hour. Um, but because I want to make sure we got your story out there. I decided, you know what, there's still a little bit more. I want to make sure we, we get that out there and how you became a life coach. But, you know, dreams are a crazy thing. And you, know, I've seen dreams for myself personally show me exactly the future. Like Whoa. exactly like to the point where I could I can predict what's going to happen from a dream to the and also see dreams be like you said very symbolic um mm-hmm. like you know the, the the dream is not real and there's no reality in basis but if I think about it and what the what what I was seeing what it means to me then it can be pathetic you know, it can tell me about something that's going to happen. I've had that experience, too. And I, I find that so interesting. You know, what's going on when we're sleeping? You know, uh, like you said, you wrote it off before this experience. You know, mm-hmm. before that, you, you know, I think like most Christians, uh, you know, they I go to church. You know, I mm-hmm. pray. I'm good with God, right? Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. they don't think about the supernatural experience. They don't think about the crazy stuff the Bible talks about. I mean, think about exactly. all the crazy stuff that happens in the Bible. But yeah. then it's just this mundane go to church every Sunday. But if you th- you know if you really are into it, you're really into being a Christian. Man, think about your Bible has some amazing supernatural experiences throughout that whole book. Uh, you know, and wh- where are they now? Where's those supernatural mm-hmm. experiences? They're here. We're just oh, yeah. too busy looking at our phones to notice. I swear that's what's happening. So true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. The Bible is so supernatural. It's like so cool. Like you said, I didn't even realize that. Like with dreams, I started studying the 
people, the dream interpreters of the Bible. So we have like Joseph um, in the Old Testament. He was a dream interpreter, you know, the yeah. the boy with the, you know, the coat and everything. Talk and then Daniel. Coat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, in order, like his dreams and his dream interpretation helped him become second in command right. of Egypt, you know? Super cool. And then Daniel, he was like, got to stand next to the king when he was interpreting dreams and help people and stuff and um, studied his symbolism. And then even going back to like when Jesus was born, like he was announced like through dream right. to his father Joseph, you know? And so without those dreams and without the angels coming and you know talking to them and stuff, like what? Like and there's it, also it's, it's evil so forces too because you have uh, mm -hmm. the king at that time getting yeah. a prophecy saying that somebody's going to be born that's going to destroy your kingdom and he goes out and slaughters a million innocent children to make sure that doesn't happen well, not a million but you know yeah. all, all, hundreds of innocent children uh mm -hmm. to make sure he he can get the right one you know like exactly. he, he he believed in that prophecy so he, prophecy can be good and it can be evil you know yeah. because whoever whoever made that prophecy was sentencing a bunch of uh, innocent children to to death yeah well you know and it's like well, dreams, um, there's three places dreams can come from, and we can always talk about this later, but it's, we have God dreams, we have dreams of, like, what we ate, you know, the night before, like, in kind of, like, soul dreams, kind of, like, what we're going through, and then we can have dreams from, like, the enemy as well. Like, they can right. kind of put us in dreams, and I'll um, go into, like, how you can, like, tell which it is and stuff, but, you know, prophecy... If it's, you know, from God, God always has, like, a redemptive plan and stuff. But people might interpret it in a different way and then turn it into something Bad things might evil. happen. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> they, like, they'll turn it into something Like the person who made the prophecy is like, like, oh, there's going to be this great boy that's going to be born and he's going to change the world. And the king's like, mm -hmm. he's going to change the world? That's my kingdom, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so that person's intent might not have been bad. <laughs> but the information yeah, yeah, went to the well, wrong person. Exactly. All right, guys, exactly. we do play music out the late night in the Midlands Radio Network. Don't freak out. We will have some quiet. We will take phone calls after this commercial break. Um, sometimes we take them earlier. This time I'm waiting. I want to make sure we got a full story, but please, please call in into the show after this commercial break. I'll give out the phone numbers and that where you can call in the Skype lines. You can call in. If you got a dream you want to talk about tonight, I'm sure, Marley, you'll be up to hear about it, right? Well, probably might have stepped away, but I'm sure she would. And uh, Or your own paranormal experience. Call on us and tell us about that. This is why we do the show. We want to hear about your paranormal experiences tonight. Call in. All right, guys, we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Do you have a question or want to tell us about a paranormal experience you have had? Well, the phone lines are open. Call in at 219-230-4444. That's 219-230-4444. Tonight on Paranormal Soup, our guest is Marley Love. She's a life coach dream interpreter we're gonna get into the dream interpretation stuff tonight definitely but she's talked about her paranormal experience you know have you had that feeling like somebody's watching you yeah for people watching you can't hear the music but i know that feeling you feel like you're being watched you know the negative energy around you you see it you have the dark shadow experience have you had that experience call into the show the phone lines will be open here in just a second you can call in at 219 Two three zero four 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 four. Just a second. Don't call yet. And you can call in on Skype ID O O J Bland O O. And there's also the Soup live chat, 100 live chat Skype ID. We can see you by video. Uh, you can't see Marley, though. We got her on the phone line. But just remember, call in, uh, ask your question, or tell us your paranormal story. Have you had this experience? Have you had a curse? Do you believe you've been cursed? Please call in. I want to hear about it. I know Marley does, too. Maybe she'll have some advice for you since she experienced this. She's definitely done research and looked into it, just like I did. When you have this experience, they, they scar you, and you want to make sure it never happens again, so you look into it. All right, guys, let's get back to our guests. Thanks for hanging in there with me, Marley. You still with us? Yep, I'm still here. 
Awesome. All right, guys. I am. Uh, sometimes I have trouble getting the phone lines open, and they're still not open. Hold on a second. I am getting the phone lines open. Again, you can call in at 219-230-4444, Skype ID OOJBland00. Uh, I know one person was trying to call in earlier. If you want to call in now, the, the phone lines are open. Actually, I might try calling them. That doesn't show that. They, oh, there he is. Let me <laughs> see. Let me see if I can get a hold of him. Because anyway, I feel bad. He tried calling, and I, 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 I psyched him. I psyched him. I said, I'm going to take him <laughs> So let's see if we can get him on the line here, because he's always got good questions. Fingers crossed. But the dream interpretation thing, that that so interests me, because like I'll, I'll tell you some of my uh, little bit of experiences with dreams and that, and okay. why I think, like you, they're super important. It's ringing, but I'm not, not getting them. Try calling in, Zach. It was Zach, our, our regular caller. Hopefully yeah. he's still still awake. I made him hold. I'm sorry, Zach. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I feel like dreams are super important. Uh, that they are trying to tell us something. Um, I mean, for people, so many people have had experiences where um, even uh, the the uh, loved one who's passed has come to people mm -hmm. in dreams. Those kind of experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, for yeah. me, when I uh, I would have serious like major deja vu, if, you know, if, wow. uh, because I would dream about something, forget about it, and then later on it's that incident that I dreamt about starts to happen. Yeah. And yeah. It, and I go, oh my God, I dreamt about this and this is what's gonna happen next. And sure enough, it does. Cause I, I dreamt mm -hmm. about it exactly. Sometimes it's stupid stuff. Sometimes it's really important. I actually saved somebody from killing themselves because of a dream Whoa. because of that. Yeah. So I, I extremely believe in the importance of dreams. Yeah. You might be um, prophetic, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have been. Trust me. You can ask my yeah. wife. I've yeah. I've dreamt about stuff, said stuff, especially you know, celebrity deaths. You know, don't, don't dare. <laughs> uh, celebrity wish we don't talk about them in this household. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoa. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, you should. Um, yeah, you might. You never know. You might be a prophet or something. <laughs> Hasn't won me the lotto, though, right? Uh, yeah, well, you, need, you won't need to win the lotto, you know, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's, give me the numbers, man. I know, right. that's why I'm like, Jesus, can I get the numbers to lottery <laughs> each night or something? But I'm like, well, maybe it's just not... Maybe I don't need the lottery right now. Maybe I'm not ready. <laughs> I do. No, 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 I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we, we got. We do have a phone line. Uh, Someone oh. calling in. Who do we got uh, on the line? Oh, I got to turn them on. Hey, hold on, Tyler. One second, Tyler. I got to make sure I got you up on the. Uh, everybody can hear you on Facebook. There you go. All right. How you doing tonight, Tyler? Pretty good. How you guys doing? Doing great. We got a doing question awesome. for our guest, or a paranormal experience, or both. Um. Actually, I kind of got mixture. Um. You know, I I I believe in the generational curse myself. Uh, I I believe I'm I got something attached to me. I called in the show a couple times and talked about mm -hmm. that. And mm -hmm. and what's what's really ironic too is that song I sent you, Jason, is uh, "Unborn Generational Curse." It's the uh, it does say title "Unborn." I didn't play it tonight. Song. I didn't play it tonight because I was kind of doing an '80s kind of like retro kind of thing, but. Um, but I do want to play that for people. Tyler made an awesome intro song. I'm trying to fit in here, uh, but it is awesome. <laughs> it's called Unborn. Oh, wow. uh, so that's about a generational. Your what you believe is a generational curse for you? Um. Yes, and 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 you know. Um. But I don't see it in my kids. You know, my my kids. They're they're very smart. Um. They're doing really well in their life. You know. I I but got their kids, it. Tyler. I got it on me because I know I got a lot going going for me in my life but you know i'm trying to manifest myself doing doing better things you know because I, I get mm -hmm. i get those i get those intuitions in my my dreams and mm -hmm. and i get visitors myself and i wanted to talk about my paranormal experience yeah because i was in um a job core um in treasure lake in oklahoma and <laughs> Uh, one night I was dreaming, I was uh, seeing a Native American talking to me, wow. and he was starting to get kind of violent with me. And mm. I punched, I punched my my bed, and my roommates woke up, and one of my friends, he was he was really scared. He said, "I just seen something walk over to you and look at you." Like a shadow person well, kind of deal, like a, did he, or did he see like an actual like it, physical description of a person, or? No, no, he said it was a, it was a, a white figure and it had had Ooh. the um, dress as a Native American. Oh, so it he saw out like that a physical the person. job corps that 
I was at was was built around an uh, Indian mound. Oh wow! <laughs> so, oh. and we're around um, sandstone. So that's another little little spark to uh, so criminal you, activity too. Do you think the, the <laughs> Indian there was trying to tell you to stop working on the on a, you know? I don't know. Maybe it was just knew I was sensitive to that realm. And right, right. Thought, yeah. hey, it would be uh, kind of interesting to mess with them, or uh, that's the way I took it. You know, mm-hmm. I was always told I'm pretty sensitive when it com- when I fall asleep. It's kind of like a th- my third eye opens and I can see the other side. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Well, you're open to yeah. it. So the Indian found the first person they could kind of communicate, like, "Hey, I'm mad." <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and, and and that's when I really knew. I mean, I kind of knew when, as a child. I knew. I knew. I. I. My dreams weren't like everybody else's dreams, where they're you mm-hmm. know, they they don't th- they don't know they don't remember their dreams the next day. I do. I can I can remember my dreams from when I was five years old. I, I oh, remember wow. dreams from seventh grade, or you know, <laughs> I can go way back. <laughs> oh wow. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. I can't. I had to write all mine down. So that's very interesting. I think that's how most people, you know, you brush off yeah. your dreams, you know. But yeah, you know, Tyler, it sounds like you knew something special about your dreams from an early age. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. Like I just, I feel like it's just. Uh, you know, I I I feel like it's. A, I feel like I'm cursed sometimes. You know, like I have. Uh, you know, I can hinder it to a certain extent, but. Mm-hmm. But me and me and Jamie were talking about the other day. We can like the pressures of the world, you know. Like um, I get pressures in my head and my ears ring and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then when I go to sleep, that's when it really, really activates. Like I fight, I talk. My 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 significant other, she goes sleep in the living room because she can't take it anymore, <laughs> kind of thing. So you're still you're wow. are you having like what like kind of like a night terror situation? Or? Yeah, they're more they're. They get violent. They get pretty yeah. vi- violent. Um, as a kid, I my mom had to move my bed away from the walls because I would be hitting the walls. So I that's another thing. I don't I don't sleep next to anything that I could possibly hurt myself with or have hit boards or anything like that. Wow, Tyler. Wow. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um. I would definitely. I would say. There might be, well, you said it yourself, you already feel like you're cursed and um, there might be like a demonic entity that's there around you that is just messing messing with you, which they don't, they don't need to you can get rid of them. And, 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 you know, I do have that, you know, uh, um, the faith, faith of the uh, demonic and, you know, angels that are around me that protect me and stuff. You know, and one thing that I was taught is that angels can come to you in an instant, pretty much, and that demons it takes takes them forever to come to you, and like because they, you know, I don't, I know how to explain that. And it's, they have to have uh, a doorway. They have to have like an that, opening. But kind of that's kind of how I was taught that it takes demons forever to come to you, but once they're there with you, it's really hard to get them off. I mean, we can ban- I mm-hmm. I can have them banished and banished and banished. It's it's my free will. And 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 the and the addictions, and I got rid of those, you know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the hard hard addictions. <laughs> but just, yeah. I, well, I, uh, real quick, you know, I asked you, Tyler, because we were talking about this earlier. Is that something that's like in your that? whole fa- your family has suffered that a lot of addictions? Sorry, you're breaking up, breaking oh. out there, Jason. Oh no. Uh, does your has your family suffered a lot of addictions? Yes, um, my my grandfather he was an alcoholic. Uh, it's it's hitting my sister. My sister's the one that's I I can feel every time when I go around there. It's it's cold. It's cold and and very very dark. But she sh- she you know and 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 she and she also has like a flip of a script. Like she'd be really nice us and like on my birthday. <laughs> She mm-hmm. flipped out on me like she was really nice, was really sweet, and then moment later, boom, got punched. Oh, and I, I, I felt felt the enemy there really bad. Mm-hmm. 
Sorry to interrupt you, Marley. Go ahead. I just, I, I was curious because that's what we were talking about earlier. No, no, no. This is all like really um, interesting and stuff. And I want to say because I, um, I'm sorry. What was your first name again, Tyler? Yes. Tyler. Okay. Okay. So Tyler, what interests me was when you said that um, angels can come like really fast, but it takes demons like a while to get there. But I really. I, it actually, like, I won't say it's easy for a demon, but it doesn't take demons a long time to get to get somewhere. Like we were talking earlier in the in the show, like a lot of times it can be like our thoughts. Like if our thoughts are telling us something that's opposite of what God says about us, then that could be like a do- demonic activity and stuff. And so, um, and I think with angels, like manifestation, like, we- like manifestation. Yeah, like when you believe those thoughts about yourself, and we, Jason and I were talking about that earlier, that kind of opens up a door to the demonic, and then they come in, and then they send more thoughts, and then, and eventually you can get rid of them because saying like that's not true, that's a lie, you know what I mean? You kind of fight it off, and then they'll flee, like it says, resist the devil, and he will flee and stuff. So you got to resist those thoughts. Um, so I, I don't want to scare people and say it's like easy for. <laughs> you know, to get demons around you or anything. But I'm just saying, like, they don't play fair. They don't play, they play dirty. And they'll do anything they can to try and, like, ruin your life and stuff. And so, um, when you just realize that, you're like, okay, this is the opposite of what God wants for my life. And there might be a demon there. Let's get rid of it and then start going on the path that I need, that I want to go on. Hopefully that makes sense. Like, like planting seeds. Planting new seeds, yeah, and, exactly, and, and exactly. breaking off branches. Yeah, yes. You know the new ones will grow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank yeah, you, Tyler, for uh, calling in. I, I thought I story. would share that, that little story. Maybe there's there's somebody out there that can relate or something. <laughs> yeah. No, Tyler. Thank you so much for um, sharing that story. And I think you can like be set free from all of this and from like everything because you said i know you said you got rid of the addictions but you still feel like there's more there i i, I mean yeah i i do because like uh, another example of this is i mean I, I don't know if i said this before on the show but my like my cu- my cousin he tried to attack me and wow. um he got three scratches on his side and wow. i've also had dreams of this little figurine he's about the size of a bar stool, and he's re- he's really skinny and he's demonic. And I even looked, kind of looked him up, kind of see which what rank is he possibly, where he's at mm-hmm. in, in the demonic world, and I kind of got a little picture of what he looks like. And I'm like, yeah, that that's got to be him, mm-hmm. Some, something like him, and and and. Wow. Yeah, and and like I said before, uh, I had that had a dream about him, and, and it manifested in front of me. And I tried waking up this girl next to me, and she would not wake up, and her eyes were wide open, and yeah, <laughs> she did not remember wow. none of that the next day. <laughs> wow, so. that's interesting. <laughs> Tyler, like you, you said, say it- her eyes were like almost rolled back and like frozen in the back of her head. Yeah, she was frozen, and her mouth was wide open. Oh, that's And I was trying funny. to wake her. She would not wake up. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And I was screaming and screaming and screaming on top of my lungs just to... It, and and, you know, and his little, this little, this short it demonic move, entity is stared at me. <laughs> but this, this is happening while the short demonic entity is in the room with you. It, it was just that one. It was just that one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, Tyler. And it was terrorizing yeah. my sleep, and I woke up trying to escape the dream, you know, because yeah. done, I've done that before, been, you know, i am gotten that communication in my brain. If it got, gets too intense, I know how to kind of wake myself up in the mm-hmm. dream. And, and but no, it didn't work. He, it was standing right in front of me, and it scared the sh- living crap out of me. You know, it sounds like you were awake. That's why you couldn't wake up. You were already awake. And, you know, that's what it sounds like. And, and that's, and science, and this is another thing, is, and the psychologist will say when, with, with that, is it's um, sleep paralysis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not in REM, but I am. I'm, I'm awake right. and fully active. 
I'm not getting That's what the skeptics night, throw out every time. <laughs> it's like, well, <laughs> sleep paralysis. I'm like, yeah, I know what sleep paralysis is. This ain't it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't it. It's it's. I'm getting attacked because I'm I'm, I'm um, acceptable to to what's going on or or sensitive to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you definitely have a a big. I I always say like the enemy doesn't mess with us for no reason. You know what I mean? And so I think he messes with people to derail their purpose and their destiny. And I think, Tyler, like, it's happening to you because you're open and you do have, like, a, a great purpose and a really great destiny. And I think the enemy doesn't want that to happen. And so he, no, he doesn't, doesn't want you to get sleep. He doesn't. Yeah. I know it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Keep fighting, buddy. He knows buddy. what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Keep fighting. Uh, yeah. Like, my, my, my dream is to start a nonprofit um, anti-bullying organization. It, because I, one of my friends, lost her daughter to suicide because she was being bullied, and and I <laughs> attempted suicide because I was being bullied when I was mm. in eighth grade. Da 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 da. But anyways, mm. uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's the enemy knows what I want to do and knows I'm not going to try to fall and try to mislead people to the wrong to that side. You know, accept mm-hmm. Satan and mm-hmm. become rich and famous. And, no, well, mm-hmm. Satan definitely I'm, likes I'm the bullies. <laughs> Satan definitely likes the bullies. They're definitely on his side. I'll tell you what. Well, thank you, Tyler, for calling in, man. It was, yes, thank sir. you so much for sharing. Yeah, Tyler, well, reach for... out to. I was just say after this, I'm so sorry, guys. No, sorry, Tyler. Um, if after this, like, you got my website. If you go to my website, my email as well, I can like pray for you to get rid of that. As well, that, so you don't have to live with the so curse. Awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> right, my well, email, if you just go to MarleyLoveLifeCoaching dot com, email me and we can talk like after this as well because I definitely want to pray for you because I don't want you to have to keep. I'll make sure you get thing, the contact so. information too, Tyler. Thank you. I'm shaking too, <laughs> talking about this. <laughs> I, I, I know that feeling. Everything tonight. Well, thank you, Tyler. You have a great so night. Welcome. All right, you too, Jason. All right, bud. Bye. Bye. This is exactly why I do the show. Is because of yeah. those experiences and having people a place they can talk about it, you know, and, and open up. I mean, me and Tyler, we hang out on you know the internet, basically playing games and stuff together. And he, he, you know, he knows what I do, and he still never told me that that really that whole story until tonight. I mean, he's told some of it on the show, but that's about the most. That's the most I've ever gotten out of him on it. Wow. Uh, and I, I really, you know, I it makes me wonder. You know, you see so many families. You know, they do say it's genetics, but with addiction and, you know, but it's not genetics when it comes to, like, hard luck and and uh, and poverty, as you mm-hmm. call it, you know. Uh, we do got another phone call I want to take here, Ooh, okay. hopefully. Hopefully it comes on. We got our regular caller with great questions, Zach. How you doing tonight, Zach? Doing great, brother. I apologize for missing your call earlier. I had to go run out and get another cigar. Nope, for, uh, no problem. For the three hours, though. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have another cigar for this one, man. All right, so I have two questions tonight. I'll keep them as short as possible. Uh, Marley, love hearing your story. Um, my first question goes along the line of your own uh, research based on your experience. My question is really um, you believe really that either it was the employee uh, employees at this resort or the really the the sellers of this timeshare that passed along this demonic entity over to you as well as created the portals on the souvenirs that you had mentioned but my question to you is based on your research what do these practitioners have to give in order to really send out um a negative presence or even attach a portal onto somebody or an object that somebody owns yeah you know Honestly, I have no idea when it comes to that. Like, because I studied, like, just the demonic and how to get rid of them. But I don't know how they still really sent it to me. I I don't know. Uh, well, <laughs> housekeeping. Those yeah. housekeepers, you know, you know, a lot of these things require some kind of physical object from you. One, did anything of yours go missing? 
You know, I don't know. Um, That'd be my first question. The other thing is they easily could have just taken some hair from a brush or something. Exactly. You know, they walked in and they, they could have just, like, touched something that I didn't realize. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I wish I did know. Your mattress. Yeah, True. maybe. Um, I wish I knew, though. But I know, like, with the portal, the lady that helped me said um, they just put their energy on it. I, I don't know what that what that means. Well, I know with witchcraft yeah. and that kind of stuff and uh, voodoo, it always requires some kind of bo- nasty bodily fluids. I mean, they'll take excrement mm. and use it in a spell. <laughs> I was just saying, oh like, it's always like, you know, uh, uh, when you get down to like the nasty stuff and in, uh, mm. in spells and that, sometimes they're, you know, they, they really got a thing for the bodily fluids and leftovers to use because it, it, oh. it's like they need something of your you to to, yeah. to, to lock on, to, to send that curse. I, I think those maids took something from you. Or took I think uh, so. some like hair or something and used it. Yeah, gave probably it the, gave it to that guy, that voodoo guy. Probably, yeah. Um, she didn't do a timeshare. I, <laughs> Here's some of her hair, you know. It's ridiculous. I'm still mad at my friends for giving me that suggestion. I'm like, why did you guys tell me to stay there? I'm like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, did this happen to you? I'm like, are you guys here? So, <laughs> so Zach, you got another question? I do actually, and it goes along the line of dream interpretations um well really whenever whenever i hear about dream interpretations the first thing that i instantly think about is sigmund freud's philosophy on dream interpretation which basically um he outlines it as it's a way for people to experience really their own desires um that they uh cannot get when they are physically awake marley my question to you is what is your take on that, and what category would you actually put that in in the three categories that you had mentioned earlier? Yeah, you know, um, my take is we do have, like, the soul dreams or, like, the medicine that we are taking or, like, what we ate. So, like, you could be experiencing something like a fight with a friend and have, like, a dream about that friend, you know? That's no problem. But I... 150 percent believe that we have god dreams god sends us dreams to like warn us to tell us you know what's going to be happening to encourage us to kind of show us what we should be doing in the future and stuff and then again i said like we have like the enemy dreams as well where the devil kind of puts stuff in our minds it's also so i guess sigmund freud he might have been talking about the soul part of the dreams. Like that middle I, don't know, part. I think he was talking about the devil part of the dream. Oh, yeah. Maybe talking about the devil. Yeah. I don't. He, he seems like he wasn't really that big of a believer in all of, you know, no, the spiritual He always stuff wanted to relate it back to you having sex with your mother or something. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but how you can tell, I tell people this. They're looking like, how do I know if I had a God dream, a devil dream, or a soul dream? Like, how do I know? I would say, like, God dreams are very colorful. So if you All right. wake up... With, um, sorry, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, God dreams are usually very colorful. So if you wake up and you're like, okay, it's a colorful dream, and here's what happened. And then your soul dreams, those are more, like, dull colored. And, again, they deal with stuff that you're kind of going through most of the time. You're like, oh, that was a little too crazy, or... I dreamed about, you know, my husband or something like that. I don't know. But, um, and then the enemy dreams, those are usually like black and white. So if, whenever you wake up in the morning, first write down your dreams first immediately and write, like if you kind of title it, say what color, if it was colorful or like black and white, and then just write out what you remember in the dream. And that really can help, um, a dream interpreter and help you to see if you need to do something with that dream, pray about it, or just kind of like throw it out and say, Oh, that's that really doesn't mean anything, you know? Yeah, you definitely have dreams that don't mean anything. I know I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I hope they don't mean anything. Maybe mean something about myself, but <laughs> well, yeah. thank you, Zach, for calling in, bud. Yeah, thanks, Zach. Sorry, I couldn't answer the All first right, question. Thank you. <laughs> Oh no, that's that's all cool, Marley. I, I loved hearing your story and all that. And as someone who also has had experiences with negative entities before, still going through it right now, I can definitely relate to it. 
okay. Well, if you need to reach out and you need to pray for you, let me know. Email me. <laughs> we'll get everybody's demons away. Oh yeah, sure. You might get some tonight. Well, thank you, Zach. Man. <laughs> you have a good. You have a great night, man. Hey, you too, brother. You take it easy. You too. But yeah, you know, dreams are such a powerful thing, and you, people just don't. I think people take for granted how much they uh, affect our lives. I mean, you wake up from them every day. You know, they they're so affecting true. you. They're affecting you in some way, even if it isn't from God or whatever. It, you know, your dreams, your you know, Sigmund Freud, I didn't really uh, care for his thoughts about dreams. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I completely disagree with a lot of things Sigmund Freud said, but uh, um, I, I like the uh, Carl uh, Jung or Jung, like his interpretation of like the archetypes and the ideas, you know, the, the symbology of your mind and what, it, what, you know, things we all can relate to that kind of like a, a starting guide to knowing what your subconscious is trying to tell you. I, I was more along those lines, I, not Sigmund Freud. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it's so interesting like the whole dream realm because it it like when you think about it, you're like okay i'm god is sending messages to me as i sleep and they mean something and what do i do with it it's like it all can get kind of jumbled but when you just break it down and say okay what is what is my dream about you can really get an awesome message and help lead you to to your next step i tell people Dreams can lead you to your purpose because I definitely I, believe that. I'll, I'll, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, they really can. I used to dream about zombies all the time. Ooh, ooh, well, okay, we're gonna hold that for the last commercial okay. break because I, I, I actually was gonna ask you about the meaning of that because I have zombie dreams and I, I feel like there's a meaning to it. But uh, oh wow, well, so yes. that's interesting. You said that. That oh wow, okay, yeah, because wow. I have these zombie dreams and they're usually before some big event happens in the world. I, I'm not joking, wow. like 9-11 kind of stuff. So, Whoa. yeah. All right, when we come back, people watching on Facebook, we do play music out of the Late Night in the Millions Radio Network. This is the last commercial break. When we come back, we will take phone calls after the commercial break and call in, uh, share your story with us like Zach did, like Tyler did, or Zach had great questions. you got a great question for Marley, call in. Or you got a weird dream you want her to get her input on shortly, we can. All right, guys, we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Tonight on Paranormal Soup, we are talking to Marley Love, life coach, dream interpreter, and paranormal experiencer. This is her night of coming out, telling people about her experience, and we are taking phone calls. You can call into the show at 219-230-4444 or Skype ID bland oo or at Soup Live Chat 800 Live Chat. You can call in. Uh, we can take a couple more phone calls before the end of the show here. But let's get back to our guests. So, Marley, dream interpretation. Yeah. So, what do zombies mean? Because I swear I will have these zombie survival dreams. This is before The Walking Dead, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, was into, I wasn't I was ever really into zombies. I mean, you know, or into horror films so much, you know, like, it's not really zombie films. I, I enjoyed, like, zombie films. Like, Shaun of the Dead is one of my favorite movies. But mm -hmm. I would have these, I, and I, I, when I have them, these zombie survival dreams, and they'll be reoccurring like for okay. a period of time, like a couple of weeks, and then something will happen. Like, it, this is what happened to me was 9-11, you know. Um, oh, wow. You know, and, and, and there's other events like that that have happened, school shooting, stuff like that. I'll have these zombie dreams beforehand. I don't know if that's pathetic symbolism. I don't know. But so when you, you piqued my interest when you talked about zombie dreams. So I'll give you the floor on that. <laughs> yeah, which first I can't believe I said zombies, and that's like something that means like a lot, you know, to you specifically because I just – that's like the first thing, you know, that popped in my head. So that's really interesting. Yeah. But um, usually zombies, because zombies kind of represent like the living dead, right? Like they are alive, but they're dead. And so what I've learned, um, and this comes from Doug Addison. He's like a prophetic life coach and dream interpreter and does a lot of great teachings on dream, dreams. Um, so you should look them up after this, actually. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, you should. Um, but zombies kind of represent... I helping people that are dead that want to live so 
I'm trying to see if I can explain it in the right way because I'm like, Marley, you're not explaining this right. <laughs> but for me, I'll do me specifically. Like, I kept seeing zombies and they were just like around and stuff. And I felt like I help people that are just wandering around aimlessly, like they don't have a purpose and right. stuff. They're just like, they're just there, you know? And so and that's where I'm like, oh, maybe that's why I'm, I've been having all these zombie dreams because I'm supposed to help people find their purpose and their destiny and stuff and so for you because it's always like a survivalist and zombies represent living dead i have an it's idea really, what they mean it means to me if you want me to tell you yeah yeah please do i mean besides i think it's something pathetic i think it's my view of the world around me because I see a lot of people as zombies, I, you know. I, I, I see as I, I don't like big cities um, mm -hmm. because I feel like they're a death trap. <laughs> this is the fear and loathing of Jason Bland. Uh, yeah. uh, because I, you know, people are so unaware of the evil out there, mm -hmm. and yeah. being unaware makes you a, a instrument of that evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. Uh, I see, I don't want to get all Alex Jones here or anything, but I see a lot of stuff happening in the government and over the years. And uh, I, when I have these zombie dreams, they're usually something along those lines of something that's going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. That people are the zombies. They are the danger. Because if stuff falls apart, things happen to society or things go down, we are all a danger to each other because of how people react and what they do. You know, mm -hmm. because yeah. of that unawareness. They, they've been walking, I mean, heck, we're zombies on our cell phones. Yeah, I'm, I'm guilty yeah. of it just as anybody else. I'm just very much guilty of it. Me too. I had to go on social media fast because I was yeah, guilty of it. Yeah, it's definitely needed sometimes. Definitely. And I'll, I'll add something else, Jason. Like for you specifically, it's like because you're doing this show and you're really awakening a lot of people and helping people like you, like Tyler that just called in. It's like he's releasing all of that right. out here to make him feel better, to kind of um, find it themselves. In a way, because you have these experiences, what does it mean? How how can I be myself after I see this? You know, and so you're like really out here having that platform to help people become themselves, find themselves afterwards after they have these experiences. Yeah, yeah. That, and this, it, it's, it's when you're talking about what you know, what you zombies mean to you and all that. It's like I think that it's very similar to what I think about the. Uh, uh, about my situation, you know, is that that's how I see the world around me. It's a bunch of zombies around me. Yeah, definitely. And when you have these dreams, you definitely just start praying about them. <laughs> start praying them through and be like, okay, I'm, I'm having them. And God, what do you want me to do with this? Like, I tell a lot of people too, sometimes, just like you said, when you were having those experiences, you're like, God, help me. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like, you guys just ask. That's all you say, God, what the heck does this mean? Can you confirm it to me? And a lot of times he'll confirm it to you with like a friend, family member, like something on TV too, you know, like something that's close to you. So you'll get it. And then you'll be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And you can get to that next level that you want to go to. Maybe so God say, told you to say zombie, you know, to make me confirm honestly, that, that feeling to myself. Because I wonder about that. You know, I, I, I fear having those zombie dreams, though, because they are pathetic. They, to yeah. me, they are. They, they always leave. They'll be reoccurring. I'll have the first one. I'm like, oh, boy. And then it'll be another one a couple days later. And then they'll ramp up. And then, boom, something will happen. Yeah. I think that's that's very interesting. I wonder, like, I feel like God's, like, telling you, I don't know. But you're, you said you're agnostic. Yes. Right. That's what's called. <laughs> I believe I'm an agnostic, but I'm an agnostic who believes in a higher power. You know, okay. I, I'm not a complete, like, I'm not an atheist, obviously. Okay. Uh, yeah. Know. But yeah, I'm an agnostic that believes in a higher power. I believe in an afterlife. Um, I question most things, but not everything. There's some things I've, I've gained enough data, in my opinion, to form an opinion on. Okay, cool. So when you have those dreams, start praying to a higher power about them, being like, I don't want nothing bad to happen, or can you stop it, and stuff like that. Because God might be showing you, because you might have some, something in you that can help, help it a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, with, like I said, 9-11, mm -hmm. my friends around me at that time, my wife, my mom, and dad, uh, all knew months before that happened, I was telling people there was going to be a terrorist attack on this country. Wow. And I didn't consider it pathetic then. Uh, yeah. I, I considered it just my analysis of what was going on in the world 
and yeah. what we're heading heading towards. And uh, you know, and basically my conspiracy theory that you know the government needed an excuse to get a war in Middle East. You know, so mm-hmm. uh, when nine eleven happened, I had a lot of people turning to me like, "What's going to happen next?" I'm like, "I'm not a psychic. This wasn't psychic." <laughs> but in a way, I I think back to it. I think back to those zombie dreams. There was some psychic push to it. There was some. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. something trying to tell me, you know, something big's happening or coming yeah. down. Yeah. It's very interesting. So, yeah, Jason, I I feel like um, you have more of a prophetic side to you that you should definitely open up to more. Well, do you, do you, you yourself, out. you know, I mean, you, you interpret your dreams, but do you have any that are literally dead on like you dreamt about something and then it exactly happens the way you dreamt it does that happen to you that uh, i don't think so i have a lot of deja vus and my dreams are really symbolic so they yeah. really don't happen face to face you know what i mean like me walking down the street i'm like oh, i saw this in my dream that doesn't that doesn't usually happen to me um stuff happens to people and i I write all my dreams like in my phone notes, and so yeah. I can search out like certain things. I've done that. I've, d- I've written some stuff down in my notes on my phone after having a dream. Not, I don't write all my dreams down. I should, but I have. There's been a few. I'm like, okay, I'm writing that down because that's something, you know. Yeah, it's super cool. That's like the no, major key. Put it in your phone because you can search out like if a person Speaking does something. Of our phones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. More zombies, of course. Um, but I'll do that, and I'm like, oh crap, that actually happen you know um i'll dream a lot of um like birthing dreams like oh something new is gonna happen like if you dream that you're having a baby or you're pregnant or oh yeah okay. uh, so you know those are like something new is coming in your life and so i've had a lot of those dreams i'm like oh the news coming so i'll pray into it and be like what's the next step or help me open up that you know pathway to make sure it's easier you know what i mean mm-hmm. um, oh yeah I've had dreams of like, like snakes and stuff. And oh, times- oh, it's my worst one. I, I, oh, I have a phobia of snakes. I cannot stand snakes, most reptiles, but miss especially snakes. And a snake oh. dream to me, I don't know what it means because I don't like to even think about it. I don't. I hope not to have them. And I've had <laughs> a few of those snake dreams, and they were the worst. They are the worst. Oh, I, I, I dread ever having one again it's been a long time since i've had one now watch me i will oh um, yeah sorry right put it in my head but oh my god they are the worst i wake up total cold sweats from those dreams oh i completely uh, completely agree but like snakes a lot of times because you know in the bible we call the devil like a serpent and stuff mm-hmm. so a lot of times those are um attacks like and i think god's trying to warn us where the enemy is trying to attack us so if you see a snake in like a certain area doing something that's like your warning being like, hey, listen, and he's trying to get in your life doing this. So let's pray into it. You know, so you won't be surprised and won't react in a way that will make it like worse. You know, um, I hate spiders. So when I have a spider dream, I know I'm like, that's like an attack. And I had some spider dreams literally um, this last week. And I woke up. And I literally feel like I saw like a spider like crawling, and it wasn't. Oh. I was like, Ugh, "Yeah, I woke up and think I had a snake in my bed." That's that's one of those dreams I had. Oh, it's the worst! Like it's throw the all worst. the sheets off and everything, and like, yeah, mm-hmm. It's oh, crazy. Yeah, yeah you, you talk about pregnancies. I even I had a dream once where uh, a friend of mine was t- telling me to jump in the water, save her drowning baby. Okay, wow. and I I woke up from that dream just like I even told my wife about it, and like man, that was just a, it was such an emotional dream because I mean one I can't even watch a movie where a kid gets killed anymore. You know, this mm-hmm. even before I was a parent, I started feeling that way. You know, like, but that dream hurt. It was just it was just, it was just so emotional. I couldn't save the baby; it was drowning. It was just it was heartbreaking dream, and it was just like a week later I get a call from an old employee and a friend, uh, and she calls me to just tell me. She's like, hey, I'll let you know I'm pregnant. I'm like, you know, my, one of my wife's like, why is she calling to tell you you're pregnant? And I'm like, hey, yeah, I have nothing to do with that. But, uh, you know, she was just like trying to share the news. You know, she was just like, wow, this is happening to me. I never thought it would. And I'm pregnant. And I'm like, oh, and that dream came to me. And I just, I didn't know what to say because I started thinking about it. She was the one in the dream screaming for her baby. I didn't know oh, what yeah. to say to her. And it, she ended up losing the baby. 
Wow. And I think that's what that dreamt meant. And it's like, was I supposed to say something to her there? Because there's no way in hell I was going to say something. I, I, you know, I thought about it, but I couldn't say anything about that to her. You know, she was happy and calling me, but why, why have, why would I have that pathetic dream? You know, you know, yeah. why? And it's like, why would she call me? I don't, you know, still don't know this day why she called me about it. You know, I mean, she was a friend, but not a close friend, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, so I always wondered, was I supposed to say something to her? Like, I don't know. It's always bugged me. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I don't know. Like, I feel like. Could I have done something to save that child, you know, from her losing it? I mean, that, that's something that's bothered me so. for a long time. When you brought up the pregnancy thing, that's, that's one of those dreams that came back to me. That's so weird. I keep bringing all all these dreams up that um, it's a couple years, but um, no, there's nothing you could have done about it. So I would say, don't beat yourself up at all um, with it. I what I feel is I just think you have prophetic dreams and you're open to them, and I think God just shows you, and He's like, hey, if you want to pray pray about this to stop it, like. And prayers will work. I know that sounds kind of like. But you know, what? but show me. Uh, you know, Tyler talked about he can remember dreams from when he was a kid. I do too. I remember the yeah. first prophetic dream I had was something stupid. I remember sleeping. It was I had two cousins. We we're all a month apart, pretty much in age, and we always spent the weekends at my grandparents' house. And I remember having this dream in the night we're staying there of uh, my cousin taking a car from me when we were probably seven or eight years old, taking a car from me that we were playing with and throwing it against the wall. My grandfather coming in and spanking the crap out of him. That was just it. That was the dream. And it was later that day, exactly to the T, the incident happened just mm -hmm. like that. You know, like. And it was just something stupid. There was nothing, you know, it was just a kid getting a spanking, you know, and I didn't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I knew yeah. not to throw stuff, you know, whatever, but it was just something stupid like that. And that's when it's, that's my earliest memory of when that, those kind of, what I call deja vu dreams, because now I know after that instance, because I, I knew I dreamt it and it happened right away, I'll have dreams that are prophetic like that, like not just prophetic, mm -hmm. no symbols, like exactly to the T what's going to happen, but like a year before or months, months, months before, uh, and then it happens. That's really interesting because um, I have a, a podcast that's called Purpose is for All where I like interview people. And so I've been interviewing like a lot of prophets um, th this season. For some reason, I have like all these prophets. So I asked like two of them, like, how did you know that you were like a prophet? Like, was it, you know, some people, you know, skies open, they're like, hey, you know, you're a prophet or something happens. Well, two of them distinctly said, like, ever since I was a child, I knew, like, I just had experiences, like, dreams. I could yeah. see things, you know what I mean? And that's how I knew I was, you know, I profit. And so I just started going, like, that route and stuff. And so, I don't know, Jason, like, your dreams are very literal. And that doesn't happen to you. And Everybody. I hear that. I've listened, like I said, I was listening to a lot of dream interpretation shows. Michael Vera, the owner of L and M, had one on recently, and he talked a lot about like he. I, I think he was trying to say that you know they're not very usually literal. They're usually symbolic, and he was using mm -hmm. he was using it to win the lottery. By the way, oh, <laughs> I'm God. not joking. He was, and he had won several times oh, uh, using his dreams and symbols. It's incredible. I can't remember the guest name. Sorry, Michael, and sorry to his guest. I can't remember the guest name, but it was a really good show. And I, I was thinking, my dreams are my dreams are very literal sometimes. And it, like there was a point where me and my wife got. Uh, she was we were young. We weren't married yet, and she was had a little too much to drink, and she was getting sick <laughs> and telling me to pull over, pull over. And I'm like, don't. Uh, if we do, I've dreamt about this. I know I've had this dream. This is it happening right now. If we pull over right now, a cop's going to be behind us. I know it. And we're going to get pulled over. And I was drinking a little bit that night. Oh, <laughs> don't judge wow. me. This is a long, long time ago. Oh, no, no, no judgment and, at all. Uh, <laughs> and uh, she's like, I don't care. Pull over. And it was and there was nobody on this country road. We really, I was like, okay, I guess I, it's just a dream because there's nobody here. There shouldn't be any cops out here. As soon as we pull over, <laughs> there's loud lights. And it's like to the T, exactly like the dream. I got out of it, too, just like in the dream. Uh, but, yeah, but that's those kind of things where I could predict it. Well, we got to end the show. I want you to get out your uh, information to everybody. Uh, so you have the floor here for a minute to get out your uh, contact information, website, and all that. Oh, yeah. Well, again, thank you so much, Jason, for this. This is awesome. And everyone, yeah, if you have a dream that you need interpreted um, or if you have any questions, you can reach me at marleylovelifecoaching.com. So it's M-A-R-L-I-E, then love, lifecoaching.com. And so, Jason, I just released or I'm my book is on pre-order now, um, Five Steps to Finding Your Purpose and Destiny. So if you're like, I don't know what my purpose is, what I need to do, I outline like five steps 
that I took after the experience to kind of get me really into life coaching and finding my purpose in helping other people. So if you pre-order the book, the official date that com- it comes out is September 28th. If you pre-order, you can pick to have um, a signed copy for me or we can have a free 30-minute coaching call as well that we can talk about dreams and and purpose too. So that's all on my website at marleylovelifecoaching.com and and all my um, contact info and my Instagram and all that stuff is is there too. Well, thank you so much, Marley, for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Everybody go check out Marley. You said uh, marleylove.com? marleylovelifecoaching.com Life, marleylovelifecoaching.com go check out her book uh, Purpose and Destiny is uh, her book check that out you said September 28th September 28th is the um, official release date but it's available for pre-order um, right now awesome go check it out guys next Sunday same bad time same bad channel we'll have Maggie White on paranormal investigator medium psychic I believe I don't have my notes on that as always <laughs> but we will have her on same bad time same bad channel I think a three hour show on that one too guys so next week check us out 10pm to uh, 1am central 11pm to 2am eastern on late night the midlands radio network go to the website subscribe donate do what you can to help keep this radio network alive and going because we need you to keep this great shows we have all these great hosts going all right guys have a great night see you next week For listening to Paranormal Supre here on Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network, be sure to catch us here each week, Sunday night, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Pacific. Pacific.